All right, welcome in to uh, Utah Grizzlies Media Day, the live stream right here uh, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, uh, as well a bunch of the guys rolling through. And of course, what would this show be uh, if we did not start? And let me make sure that I have him centered up. There he is. Now, uh, Lucas Parikh is our first guest in the Monty Show studio today. And Parikh, I got to tell you, I'm a little disappointed you're not wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah, what can I say? I think the guys would kill me if I would have actually brought it here. Oh, I don't, I don't know, Tyson. Can we do this interview without Lucas in the cowboy hat? I think we can. I, I, just, want, I just want to know how many cowboy hats you have because I think I've already seen a few of them. Yeah, I think right now I'm on count of five. Four that I have here, one that is in Colorado. Nice. But yeah, so far only five. How are you enjoying the friendly confines of Maverick Center? Because you stood on your head last weekend in, in Idaho. So we know you enjoyed your stay in Boise. Uh, and then the Rapid City Rush came in. And we got to talk about that game a little bit, Lucas. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> they there was a small collision. They kind of I felt like they kind of ran the ran the goal on you there. But like, what was it like playing your former team? Uh, it was, a, as I was saying before, no emotions. I think there was a lot of emotions going on at that game. I knew that Verdi is going to send the team against me, that they will try to get in my head. There were spears, there were slashes, there were guys jumping on me. Like, it's all what I expected. What I did not expect was me talking to the ref after first period and uh, Scott Bird yelling at me. That was kind of out of a line mm -hmm. for, for him that I did not expect. But I think it was just his goal to get into my head. I just loved at him, loved in his face, probably pissed him off. And hey, we won. That's all that mattered to me. Yeah, well, the, the best part of that, I thought, was that he wasn't just playing with you. He was hot. Like, he was standing about five feet to my right on the other side of the glass. I was on the Grizzlies bench. Were you surprised that he was that upset? Like, what is your – do you have good relationships on that team? Like, what's your relationship with those guys? No, I, 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 I love those guys. I was in contact with Scott Bird over summer just checking on each other. Like, he's a great guy. But I kind of expected him doing that as soon as I, as soon as I was going to the ref. And I kind of looked over my shoulder and saw him just standing there. I knew that at the moment I'll turn around, he'll just start yelling at me to get away from the ref. So all of that was kind of his plan just to try to get in my head. That was awesome. You're the third round pick of the Kings. Where were you on uh, draft day when you found out uh, you got picked? I was actually at home back in Czech because I was originally predicted to go fifth round. So my agent said, hey, it'll be just easier. It would be way too long for you just to be at the, at the arena. So I just stayed home. And I just got a text from my check agent. Hey, just be ready on your phone. It was like mid third round. I was like, that's not where, when I'm going to go. I sh like, so I genuinely just went to take a shower. I'm getting out of the shower, and I just get a call from my agent. Hey, you've been drafted 87th pick LA Kings. I was like, no wow. way. LA just ran out of shower, like still wet, like still water just everywhere. I just ran in the living room. My, my dad, my mom was like, what are you doing? And I just stood in the living room, just like, wait, wait. And suddenly just the name popped out on the screen. I was like, no way. Is that one of those like surreal moments where like that's your whole life, man? Like, it's, it's not easy to get to where you are. First of all, as a goaltender, you are, you are an incredible athlete. And I, it, one of the things that really stands out to me is your size. But it's every, there's a lot of guys that have size, but you have movement, athleticism. Like, how much work was it for you to like get to the point where the Kings were ringing your phone? It's I would say it's it all starts when you're like 15, 14 years old, and you just progress throughout the years. And of course, it helped me when I was at the World U18 Championship uh, in Sweden, and I was actually starting as a backup to Jan Bednar, that is uh, mm. right now drafted. I think he was second round to Detroit Red Wings great guy and I was starting as a backup and we the very first game was against Belarus and we were losing 4-0 after first after second period and that was the moment coach put me in the net and I didn't let goal in and I kind of stood in the nets in at, till the end of the tournament yeah I just got changed at the quarterfinals against against Sweden so like it did help me a lot because like there's a lot of scouts looking at you like the whole arena like the eyes are just on the team because it's the last tournament before the draft is happening. So that helped me a lot for sure. Man, I can't imagine that. Tyson? I was thinking about uh, the two shutouts you had against Utah last year. The one, I, I think you're talking about maybe more interesting series ever. That You've got the 46-save shutout uh, in the first game of a four-game series. And then the following game, the Grizzlies had to go with like an emergency backup 
some guy who was just on Christmas break, a college <laughs> freshman, and I don't know what happened, but he ended up beating you guys like yeah, four I know. to three. Yeah, it was the it was right after Christmas. We played the games Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Saturday. I remember it exactly because that was the time my parents came into town, and my coach knew it, and so he wanted to let me play the Monday and Wednesday game, and let the other goalie play uh, Friday and Saturday. But the other goalie got called out, so at the end, ended up playing all four games, and it was the very first Monday game. And whenever my my parents came to the states. I had horrible games. Like oh. when I was in Spokane, there were two two games out of three that I played there, and I got changed in both of them. Like there was horrible games, and my mom doesn't watch hockey because she get she gets super stressed just watching. Me. She gets super nervous. That was the first game in a while that she actually watched me live, and yeah, it was the Monday game, the very first game when my parents came. I remember them sitting when I was in my net, the very far, far <laughs> left corner, <laughs> right, right, at the very top, and the game was just unreal. Like. I couldn't believe it. Like, I actually played good. The team helped me, and forty-six save shutout. It's unbelievable. One of the I will never forget. Same as I will not forget the playoff shutout when we were losing, when we were three to one on the games, and mm -hmm. we somehow got the our first win at our home, six-five in overtime or five-four in overtime. Not you, sure right you now. You guys were had a big deficit and came and back. And we were there. losing like four-one or so, and we scored two goals at the at the end of the second, then fourth goal at the start of the third. And somehow we won, and the very next day I have a 43 save shot. I was like, that was unreal. Like, those are like the moments you will probably never forget because against teams like Utah, for me last year, Utah mm -hmm. was our rival. Like, we were bad blood with them as we were Kansas City. But those games were for me like something I will never forget. So is it surreal to, on a certain level then to, to be here? How did you wind up being a Utah Grizzly? Yeah, it's definitely surreal like to actually end up that last year I was in Rapid and I was – all ready to come back. And suddenly LA Kings didn't want to sign me. And I was like, okay, hey, we have no problem with that. Like, but we want to sign somewhere else. There was some going back and forth with that. Can't say stuff on the radio right about sure. that. But <laughs> at the end we ended up agreeing with them and signing with Colorado Eagles. And at the moment I realized, okay, I will end up in Utah. And it was like the emotions that were two-sided. I was super excited to go in Utah because I know Colorado and Utah are super great organizations. But on the other side, I spent last year in Rapid City. And for me, it was home. It was the whole city, the coaches. The, the it's a guys. great organization too, man. And like For me, it was, it was I'm not going to lie, it was family. And at the moment, I found out actually, and I realized that I'm going to Utah, I genuinely just like cried because like it was part of me that kind of was still part of the city. And I just couldn't at the moment just handle it. Yeah. Hey, before we let you go, Lucas Freak, um, let's talk about where you're headed and what you're, you know, obviously you're in an organization that's pretty deep goaltending wise. I mean, you look at the three guys you have here, you, uh, certainly Trent Minor, Garrett Metcalf, like what, so what are you working on? What are your, obviously I, I, I have to believe VA, the NHL. I mean, you have to have pretty high aspirations. Yeah, of course. My goal, especially after the season is to sign an NHL deal. Been working hard for it, especially last year and kind of didn't work out. So it's been it is even more and it's even bigger goal for me right now that i want to prove that i actually deserve the nhl deal but with the goalies here we have we are a great group of guys that are just trying to help each other trying to help each other in the practice and i think that is what's helping us and make us the group of goalies that is great because we are not like we are competitive like all of us are but we are friends that are just trying to help each other yeah that's awesome well hey man thanks for stopping by good to see you uh congratulations on all your success and I have to tell you, it's 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 been great getting to know you. I enjoy your your personality. We look forward to seeing you this weekend in uh, back up in Boise. Thank you, appreciate it. You bet. That is Lucas Perik. Uh, Nate Clerman's going to hop in here. So yeah, you. Oh, you uh, better like Nate Clerman. After all, you're a Notre Dame fan. Uh, Nate yeah. Clerman is a Notre Dame product, former captain of the Fighting Irish, and you talk about a defenseman who was really key to the Grizzlies last season. That was Nate Clerman, and. He's here now, the second-year pro out of Notre Dame. I mean, second full-year pro. Second. Spent a little bit uh, towards the end after his college days. Uh, spent some games with the Colorado Eagles. And, uh, hey, Nate, how's it going today? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing well, man. Um, so you can hit a golf ball pretty well. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, we, we, were, we were hanging out at the golf tournament. How do, how do you feel like you hit him? I felt good that day. I get to play quite a bit when I'm at home. I was in Chicago this summer, so I didn't play as much when I was in the city. But I uh, grew up playing with my dad and – 
probably my favorite hobby, uh, hobby in hockey season. So. Yeah, and it looks like you're you're pretty good at that. Let's talk about your college career a little bit because you you know obviously you had options coming coming out of high school. How did you? We, you were telling me a story the other day at the tournament about how you ended up at Notre Dame. How did you end up there? Yeah, I went to boarding school out at Culver, Indiana, which is uh, the northern part of Indiana. It's 45 minutes from Notre Dame, and I grew up liking the football team, but didn't really have a family connection like most of the kids that go there. It's a big legacy student school and a huge culture around the Irish, but um, I always wanted to go to Denver when I was younger, but as Mm -hmm. time moved on and I was out in Indiana for quite a while and toured Notre Dame, it just was the right fit for me from a hockey standpoint. I think I saw a place where I could play on that roster and make an impact and it was close to where I was at the time, so we were going to a lot of Notre Dame games, and I was seeing the gold helmets and everything, so it kind of washed over me pretty quickly, and I could have gone to the East Coast or maybe out to Denver, but uh, it all worked out for the best. Growing up, um, at what point did you realize that you know you could end up making hockey a profession for you? It was staggered. I think I was in... Um, when I was playing U14 Rough Riders out in Colorado, one of my coaches said that I might be able to play college and play Division One and pick where I went, got to go. And I ended up getting to go to boarding school, and it wasn't clear then either. I was uh, played my first two years and really wasn't talking to any schools. And then my junior year, sophomore summer, before my junior year, just kind of figured out my game, my body kind of all worked out on the ice, and I was able to use my tools, and I got a lot of offers to schools that year. So it kind of was on a switch that year, and I played a year of junior, and I was lucky enough to get drafted my junior year in high school to the Colorado Avalanche, and uh, I had a big decision to make to either go to junior or graduate, and I decided to take my time and stay at school and play one year at junior, and then uh, still getting drafted, you feel like when you're in college, like you're not really focused on pro, at least I wasn't, because I had a long, long way to go, and I was still trying to make that roster and be a top four defenseman there and make an impact in such like a storied program, so... My focus is really didn't sit, switch to pro until, again, I had a conversation with my coach after, I think it was like halfway through my sophomore year. He was like, I think uh, you could you could play pro with this game if you approach it the right way and uh, take the right route. And waited another year till my junior year, and the Avalanche offered me to sign out of school. And that was a tough decision for me. But um, obviously went ahead and made that decision to leave and chase the dream of pro hockey. You're kind of a different cat, though, man. Like, you're you're really level. You don't have like, I mean, you just followed Lucas Perique, who's about the most unlevel personality guy in the, in the locker room, yeah. I think, right? You're, you're not rolling in here with cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. And I, I say that because I think that's a really important, you know, trait for a guy that's on the blue line. I think that's a really important trait for a guy like you. Like if, if you had to describe your own personality in your own game, how would you describe the way you play hockey? Personality, I think, plays into my game. I think I'm very calm all the time. Um, I don't get riled up easily. And I think it's uh, I've learned over the years that that's not a weakness. It's a strength of mine. And I put it into action on the ice to try not to get flustered. And anything that's going on the ice, like I kind of just bring it back to just being calm. And that's the best part of my game is being able to read the offense, read the forecheck, take things within with my eyes. and make simple plays or like use my ability with my feet to uh, make some more plays when they're necessary. But I think just being calm, it allows me to like see the game for what it is when it's happening and not get caught up in things that are going to take my focus away, whether it's like scrums or the score or right, like, right. power plays or penalty kills. I think just being focused on like what I need to do and what I can control is best. I think two of my favorite personalities over the few years I've been here were a couple of former Notre Dame guys, Joe Wegworth and Jack Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how long were you teammates with them at Notre Dame? I was teammates with them for one year. I actually saw Jack this summer in Chicago. One of our friends got engaged. who was at Notre Dame as well. So we were at an uh, engagement party together, and Weggs was in his same class. So they were good uh, They were good to me when I was a freshman. I remember with Jack Jenkins, he... <laughs> He lost his wallet so many times last year. And amazingly, they always seem two days later to come screeching back to him. Yeah, I think he's working at J.P. Morgan now, so I think he's got to uh, have his wallet on him. Yeah, I was going to say, if he's working at J.P., I don't think he's losing his wallet anytime yeah, time soon. He might have figured it out a little more outside of Utah. <laughs> That's fabulous. You know, it, it, you guys have an interesting group of defensemen on this team, and it seems like you have a lot of Midwest college guys yeah. in, in this in that locker room. But – 
Talk about this group of defensemen. There was so much made coming into this season about the fact that the Grizzlies had lost a lot on the blue line and how do you replace that. I feel like that hasn't even been a conversation. Since you guys broke camp, it seems like the blue line's really been a strength. Obviously, Mac gets the C on his chest. And I mean, you, do you guys feel good about what you have back there as a group? Absolutely. I think just as guys, it's a great group back there. I think that's what you got to start with is you got to have a group back there that can communicate with one another and be friends off the ice, but also on the ice, like you got to hold each other accountable because no one's going to tell you to change your game more effectively than the guys next to you. So it's nice that we can all hold each other accountable and we know we can hold each other accountable because we're all good enough. Like we got a good group back there. Nielsen, he's got a huge shot. Um, he's played a lot of pro hockey, same with Martin and, uh, Bartley obviously has like done a ton of great things in the hockey world and he's still such a great hockey player but also just a good presence in the locker room I think on the bench for the guys to see uh, a guy who's played that many games just how he approaches his day and uh, Shears has been great since he came in last spring he's a solid uh, D-man he's been nice to play with back there just pretty level-headed and Mac uh, I think Mac's got a lot of tools he's a good defenseman up and down and uh bring it he brings it every night really he's tough and I think our other defensemen too those are the guys who uh just push each other we all push one another on the ice every day and an eight game road trip coming up uh how yeah you think about the home games and the road games how different is the road routine as opposed to routine for a home game very different I think uh just scheduling your meals is a big part for me at least I'd like to do things a certain way when I'm eating and drinking before games and after the fact so I think Traveling these different locations, especially guys who are in their first, second year, or especially mm -hmm. first year, like these first trips, it's hard to get a routine down, and sometimes you can get a little out of whack. But once we start playing midweek games and um, we play more games, you get a little tired in Tulsa on a Tuesday when you're there for a week, and you got to find a way just to. If you don't have your A game, like you, you got to have your B game. You got to bring yeah. something out of you that's gonna contribute to the team and it's about getting rest too on the road it takes it out of you if you see these long bus rides to Boise or the bus could be air could go out like it did last time and we could all be sweating and then the guys have to play in Ogden <laughs> the next night so you just got to battle and understand that everyone's on the same playing field especially when you play the three and threes I think it's really important so well you know and it's interesting you talk about those road trips life in this league is not easy I mean I, I've covered the NHL I've covered the AHL like it feels like you guys have a I'm not going to say a difficult existence because, you know, obviously I, I think you have one of the better arenas, like, but those road trips in this league, at least now you guys are flying, but I mean, you, you're in some interesting schedule configurations. You talk about staying hydrated last weekend, like how difficult, cause you've played up as well. So how difficult is life in the ECHL? Is it, is it more challenging to thrive down here? Yes, I think the travel is a big factor, and on the road especially. I think when you're when you're on the AHL and the NHL, um, like you said, like the travel is catered towards helping you feel good with a condensed schedule. I think the ECHL is very, uh, to be honest, like budget oriented and getting guys there and playing these games back to back to back on weekends and concert venue schedules. So uh, we pay the price a little bit, I think, with our recovery, but. Like I said, like everyone's on the same playing field when you show up for the game. So if you're making excuses for your team, like mm -hmm. the other team can make those excuses too. But like you got to duke it out for 60 minutes and see what happens. Well, hey, Nate, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. Always good to talk to another Notre Dame guy. Although I did not go to Notre Dame. I am a huge Notre Dame fan. Yeah. So are you a Notre Dame football fan, by the way? I am. Yeah. You are. I okay. I think I got the, uh, the, got the bug my sophomore year. Yeah, well, hopefully the season ends soon because yeah. we haven't had a whole lot to hang on to. Bad start, but hey, at least you guys beat BYU. <laughs> they built some momentum. <laughs> There's Tyson with the yeah. At least you guys beat BYU. Yeah, you went to Vegas. And I beat wanted BYU. to go to that game. I, I for some reason I couldn't find a ticket. Me too. It looked good. Yeah, it's a it's a tough game to get. Nate, thanks All for stopping right. by. I appreciate thanks, you, guys. man. Appreciate That's it. Nate Clerman, uh, D man for your Utah Grizzlies. And Tyson, I'll tell you, it's interesting. This group of guys. Nate's an interesting guy because of that that level-headed nature that, that he brings. And I think one of the things that's a hallmark of this team is that you have a bunch of guys like that. I mean, if you look at a guy like a Connor McDonald or if you look at an A. Clearman, you have a lot of guys that are level-headed on this team, I think. And because of that, you know, it's not, not only level-headed off the ice, but on the ice, you know, making good decisions, um, you know, just being solid. I mean, the thing last year that I noticed with both McDonald and Nate Clearman is they played the angle so well. You know, you get a one-on-one -on -one situation, you're, you're, 
drifting back into the attacking zone. You got an offensive player coming at you. Guys like Nate Clerman, McDonald, they're outstanding at pushing into the corner, pushing yes. to the side, just making life difficult on you. And there was a reason why he was like a plus 16 or plus 17 last year is because he just consistently made those good decisions with the puck. He may not necessarily show up on the stat sheet, but it will show up in the plus minus category and it will show up, you know, time and time again in helping the Grizzlies win games. Yeah. And I think the, the other thing that's so clear is that you have to, um, in this league, you have to win the little battles, you know, so, you know, you, you cannot get emotional. And I think we saw this with rapid city. You and I talked about this, uh, on the broadcast, um, that you can't get emotional. You cannot in any way, shape or form, you know, lose your cool in this league because it's so easy um, to to get in the penalty box and then it, it, the other team's going to score. Like you give the Grizzlies two, three, four extra power plays, you're going to find yourself in trouble. I, so I think one of the things, and if you look at the way Coach Kanasiewicz runs this team, one of the things that they preach is discipline. And I think that's a huge win for this team. And I think when you're talking about, look how close Rapid in, in Utah were last year for the division. Think about what an extra power play here or there meant. It, it, I think it was significant last year. I mean, think about the Brady DeVries game, a game they should have never won, but they end up winning 4 3 in overtime, getting that extra standing point. I mean, Rapid City did come away with one point, but the Grizzlies came up with two on a night where they shouldn't have. You know, the Grizzlies in the third game in three day scenarios over the yeah. last couple of years, their record's been outstanding. You find a way to win and you find a way to play good hockey, even when you might not be, even when you're going to be a little bit fatigued. You know, when you're going to be a little bit tired. And uh, that's where, you know, Nate Clermont had mentioned how it can be tough, those three and threes, you know, just eating right. You know, especially if we are on the road, you got different different time zones. Is it funny? You don't think about that stuff. Who knows about where your post-game meal is going to come from because every yeah. arena is going to be a little bit different. And you're not, you may not necessarily be staying in five-star hotels at some of these places. And, you know, you get two games, you know, you're playing at 7 o'clock locally Friday and Saturday. And then, oh, Sunday, well, you're going to have to get on a bus for three hours, go from Tulsa to Wichita, and all of a sudden you got to play at 5 o'clock. So yeah. it's, it can be pretty tough, and especially since, you know, some of the ranks like Tulsa's ice is kind of sketchy at times. You know, you go to Wichita, and it can be an interesting experience. Yeah. Um, that's where it's difficult to win on the road, and I think that's why the Grizzlies ended up winning the division last year is because they were able to find a way to win 19 road games. Yeah, and I, I think when you when you start to look at what the keys to success in this league are, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt that being able to play in different atmospheres plays a big part of that. When you look at all these different rinks, ice is very different. And I know a lot of people may think, well, hey, ice is ice, right? Well, I think you're well aware ice is not ice. When you look at you know, there are many buildings in this league, and Utah is one of those. The weather here in Salt Lake City, as most of us know, is it has wild swings. That outside temperature absolutely impacts the inside temperature and the the firmness of the ice. And I think as you travel around this league, you you know, like, do you have a favorite building? Of course you do. What's your favorite building in the league right now? Well, I like the one we're going to this weekend in Idaho Central Arena. Yeah. Like, it's just a fun atmosphere, 5,200 you know, capacity. It's almost always full, partly because it is 5,200. I mean, they sold out about three-fourths of their games last year. You can actually stand in the concourse for your, you know, getting a beverage and a hot dog, turn around, and watch the action because it's all just under – under one square. Oh, it's, it's beautiful up there. And it's a lot of fun. I always like Tulsa's arena, BOK Center. That's one of those that could easily hold an NHL team if it, you know, if, it, if the market. And the same thing with Wichita. I mean, the NCAA tournament's been in Wichita many times. Many so, times, yeah. So you get places like that that can be a lot of fun. But then you get a place like Kansas City. It's a nice building, but it holds about 5,000. Or you go to a place like Allen. If you're playing on a high – we had a game a few years ago. Their home opener was on a Friday night in the fall. You can bet that there wasn't many people there because everybody was at the high school football games that night. Well, and it's funny you you talk about capacity. One of the things, and I don't know, if, uh, Grizzly fans, how much people are aware of what's going on here at the Maverick Center. I mean, the Maverick Center is a 10,000-seat arena. Um, I mean, we, we routinely have everything from rodeo to music shows music shows that incorporate the rodeo. Uh, I mean, there are, there are all kinds of events here. But the, the arena is getting a major makeover right now, which is, you know, it's, it's been an interesting process because of supply chain and schedules. And, but you have a huge center hung scoreboard that's going in now. You have all these beautiful, you know, that little scoreboard ribbon that goes around the upper deck here at the Maverick Center. Um, that's huge and brand new. I mean, it just, there's so much going on in this building. I think it's going to dramatically change it. 
I and I think it's one of the better buildings. I I truly do. I enjoy the hockey that happens here. I mean, we're, when you look at the changes in the building, I mean, how do you think that impacts the game on the ice for the Grizzlies? Well, I, I, it makes a difference to the fans. You know, when you talk about that video board at center ice, that's something that fans have certainly been excited about, and I know I'm excited about. Uh, seeing the video board at center ice. I know that uh, you think about some of the other changes, you know, being a little bit more compact, closing up a little bit of the upper bowl. I mean, that's pretty good as well. And I think it's going to be an interesting um, – going to be an, an – inter- I just lost my train of thought. As, yeah, well, your favorite Utah Grizzly just walked I in. I thought he played outstanding last weekend in his first two games. Cameron Wright, the forward of the Grizzlies, led the team with 13 shots in two games against Rapid City. Um, Cameron, uh, I know I talked to Connor McDonald uh, last week. Uh, you guys were teammates at Bowling Green for two years. What's it like reuniting with him? It's really good. You know, uh, it's nice to know someone in the uh, organization. He makes you feel comfortable, and, and he's obviously a really good player for us. And it's, it's nice to, uh, to catch up and, and trade some old stories and, and enjoy each other's company. Cam, I, I got to ask you, though. You were pretty intense in the Rapid City game, especially Saturday. What was what was that? What was Saturday night like for you? I mean, it was a lot of fun to watch you to watch you get after it. And and you know, obviously, I don't know you quite well, but you really were you you dialed it up a notch. It seemed like on Saturday. So, what was the Saturday Rapid City game like for you? Yeah, I think obviously, you know, my first two pro games there is just kind of figuring out what uh, what it takes and kind of what to expect in the league. And, and obviously, Friday was a bit of a along with the preseason games, a little bit of a feeling out process. But I think Saturday, you know, I kind of just tried to remember, you know, kind of what got me here and, and, and what my role is on this team. And, and I thought, um, you know, I also wanted to win. You know, it, it had obviously been <laughs> yeah. one game, but three games as well without winning. And, and we were kind of finding ways to lose. So so it was wanted to definitely get the two points. And it was good to see us come out with it for sure. Well, you'd gotten used to winning a little bit last season. What was the experience like winning a national championship? <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was definitely uh, something that I'll remember forever. It was um, really cool. You know, I transferred to Denver with the intent of, of trying to win a national championship, and it's crazy that it, that it happened. And obviously it was a really fun run and, and really fun celebration as well. Do you ever, I mean, do you, and obviously you do look back on, on those times, like look back on your college career, look back on your, on your high school career. What are the moments that have made you into the guy that's sitting in the studio right now? Yeah, it's a good question. I think obviously I spent five years in college. You know, I came in, as a fresh 19 year old and left as a 24 year old. So I think that will change you a lot. It'll help you grow up into an adult. So I think a lot of things off the ice and on the ice definitely prepared me for kind of where I am today, as well as like you said, you know, played junior for a couple of years, played minor hockey. You know, I think all those things, whether it's the people you meet, the coaches you have, you know, your parents, I think all those things kind of help you become, you know, a, a good teammate off the ice and a, and a good teammate on the ice. And I think that's just kind of what I want to try to bring to the Grizzlies. Well, and I think you have a unique perspective about hockey life because of all those things you've been through. And I think a lot of people, especially in the States, we think about football, we think about baseball and hockey's very different. Hockey is a pilgrimage. Hockey is a way of life. Like you talk about family and I mean, it, you, you guys have to be all in together, right? To, to make it work to perform at the level that you performed at and where you eventually wound up. I mean, that takes a whole team of people doing and helping and supporting you. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, obviously it's not just me. And and I've had a lot of good support around me over my uh, life to be able to get where I am. Like, you know, from my mom to my dad, stepmom, stepmad, siblings and all that, coaches, like I said, teammates. And and obviously, you know, it's just, it's a dream come true to be able to play pro hockey. And, and it's one that I don't take for granted and one that I want to try and stretch yeah. out for as long as I can. At what point in your hockey life did you realize that, you know, the dream of becoming a professional hockey player that it might actually come true for you? I don't know. I don't know if there's a specific time. Obviously, when I got to college in Bowling Green and saw guys were moving on, I thought maybe I could I could be like that. I th- thought maybe it'd come a little quicker than than five years of college. But, you know, when, once it started to once I started to have some success in college, I thought it was it was possible. And obviously just try and live in the moment. And then, you know, when I got the offer in the summer, I was I was super excited and and then obviously it was a realistic dream at that point. Yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, Marty Phelps uh, hops on and says, Cameron played outstanding Saturday night, drew a five-minute major against Keaton Helgeson of the Rapid, of Rapid City. Great discipline. <laughs> so you're already a fan favorite. That's got to be kind of fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's good to know that, that, uh, that fans are watching and enjoying my play so far. That was a um, – that had to be an interesting moment for you. Like, I mean, that was – that was – and, and you, you smirk when I ask you that, like – what was that whole what was that whole sequence like for you? 
Yeah, I definitely, I, I was talking to some of the guys after the game in Snatch, and, and he kind of just said, welcome to pro moment for sure. Like, you know, you're battling for a puck in front, thinking you're trying to whack the puck in, and then all of a sudden the guy's got his gloves off feeding you in the face. So I think it's just, <laughs> it's a good teaching lesson for me. I'm happy I didn't obviously get hurt, but it's a good teaching lesson to learn, you know, like you said, like the discipline, stay in the moment, stay in your game, and, and, and learn, you know, kind of how, you don't want to. You got to be careful not to piss off certain guys, but then you also got to be able to handle yourself out there. So I think it was it was a good moment for me to learn. Was there any, was there one specific moment in that final in that Frozen Four run with Denver that you're going to remember fifty years from now? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely in the locker room after the third period, like after we had won and celebrated on the ice, just coming back, and it was just the fellows in the room. It was just a special moment for us and. And, you know, every single one of those guys on my team I'm bonded for life with. And, and it was just really exciting when you realized all the hard work had, it was done and you could just sit there and relax and just soak up the moment. Cam, you know, one of the interesting things on this club is you have such a diversity of experiences and experience levels, you know, from a guy like you to a Victor Bartley, right? Like just guys who have seen so many different things. How does all of that come together? Because the other word we hear about is chemistry and team and like, how does all of that make you guys who you are? Like, does that bond you guys? Do you guys, do you guys like build campfires and sit around the campfire and talk about your stories? But, or something similar, you know what I mean? Like, do you guys share those stories? Yeah, I would, I would say you're exactly right. You know, especially a guy like Bart's, right? He's, he's done it all, seen it all. And it's just, it's, it's, it's just great to be able to soak it in and, and just talk to these guys. Like you said, you know, even like from the beginning, it's just small talk, you know, where are you from? What, it, like, what do you like to do kind of thing? But I think the great thing about the hockey world is every, Every hockey player is almost the same in terms of they like talking about this, they like doing that. And, and you know, you said sitting around a campfire, maybe not a campfire, but you do spend time with each other in certain situations outside of the rink that, that, get you, that allow you to get to know guys better. And, and that's just what you want, right? You want to care about these guys so that yeah. you go to war for them every night. Yeah, and I think, that, I think that matters. And I know, like, chemistry is cliche, and we all, you know, we all use that word. But, you know, just watching you guys at the golf tournament the other day, just the... I have so many memories. I was just there filming. Like I have so many memories of you guys laughing and people laughing about lunchboxes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like how important are those moments? Like, cause there are times in this league, times as a professional are difficult. So how important are those moments where you guys laugh and, and have a good time? Yeah, just exactly. Like you said, very important, you know, cause those are the times you lean on when it is difficult. Those are the times that, that you think about when you are struggling, when you're, you know, if you're not playing, you're not playing well, if you're getting scratched, like you lean on each other, you lean on your teammates. And, and that's why it's so important to get to know each other so early. And, and like, you know, like we were saying, ha like care about your guys so that when yeah. it is difficult moments, you can lean on those and it brings you to the rink every day and it helps you remember why you do what you do in, in playing professional hockey. What do you like about the area so far? I know you probably haven't been in Utah all that long, but what do you like about Utah? Mountains are spectacular. Um, I spent the last year in in Denver and I thought those mountains were cool but this is something different you know you just you feel like you're at the base of the base of the mountains everywhere you drive and and then uh, me and my roommates uh, Zach Sekos are are big golfers so we've been getting out and, and playing the courses and those are beautiful as well bro forget it he's a better golfer than you like that <laughs> it, it is bizarre to me like you know how you just look at some people he's a baseball player he's he's a football player you're a hockey player that Sekos is a golfer like they there we have some tape of him and it just looks like he fell out of the womb, like ready to hit a driver, man. It's crazy. How good is he? Yeah, he's a good player. He's a good player. I can't, I can't give him too much credit on here because he's, <laughs> he's, he knows he's a good golfer. But yeah, he's he's definitely the best on the team. But hey, we're uh, we're chasing him, and and hopefully one day it'll I'll, I'll be able to beat him. Outstanding. Well, hey, it, it's been a, a pleasure to watch you play, man. Thanks for stopping by and stay healthy this weekend. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. There you go, Cam Wright and uh, Tyson. You were right, and Cam may not know this, and he's going to know it now, but like you predicted he was going to be an important player on this team, so he, he, he's well, he kind of validated that for you. Just look at his hockey DB profile. He's scoring tons of goals in college. Like It's, it's pretty obvious uh, what kind of player he's going to be. And speaking of scoring a lot of goals in college, the all-time leading goal scorer and point scorer at Arizona State, Johnny Walker. Uh, Johnny, how's it going? Good. How are you guys? Uh, pretty good. Uh, I was kind of thinking about – the state of Arizona State Hockey. It's one of those, we knew John Loeffner. He was with the Grizzlies for a little bit, and I think was with, was at ASU. And um, the, the rise of the program, because it, you know, it's not been around all that long. The difference between when you showed up at Arizona State playing hockey your freshman year to where you know, left, uh, what about the rise of that program? Yeah, uh, obviously the rink just went in. It's a hockey school now. 
Um, okay, settle down, Johnny. It's a hockey. <laughs> it's, a, it's an NHL <laughs> arena. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a hockey school, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it won't be long before we start hanging some we right. Like I'm still there, but the with till they start hanging some banners for sure, right? But that's a point of pride, though, isn't it? I mean, you oh, yeah. you absolutely play you absolutely play a role in that. I mean, you 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 had a you had a great career there, like. Talk about your hockey journey. What, where, you know, do you remember like your, do you have like a first big moment in your hockey career? How'd you end up at Arizona State? I would say my first big moment at Arizona State was the summer. Dylan Holman had uh, prepared food and I, that was just so outside my run. I didn't even understand the meal prep. That was not on my radar. And I was like, wow, I better, uh, better figure it out quick. But, yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't matter what kind of career you had at Arizona State if uh, if you put that jersey on, you're a Sun Devil for life, and um, that culture and tradition that we built, obviously, we still bleeds uh, when you're gone. So, um, wishing them luck this year. Great sweep of CC, and uh, it's it's a hockey school, like it or not. I know a lot of people don't, but it is. I remember you spent one year. You, I think your freshman year, Joey Ratz was playing his last year at Arizona State. He ended up playing a year yeah. with. With the Grizzlies, I remember about Joey. Rats, he just um, one of the best teammates I've ever I've ever had. Uh, genuine, um, yeah, just somebody that you you love to have in your corner. And um, yeah, obviously uh, struggled a bit there uh, with with uh, with cancer, but doing doing much better now. So is that your? And I'm going to be completely awkward, and I should know this before I ask you, but I don't. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing a fundraiser. And I know there's been local media on that or whatnot. Plug that, plug the heck out of that. Tell us about that. How can we help you with that? Yeah, so uh, he was uh, the idea of both of us. Uh, towards the end, uh, he got a lot of funding, and, and it, we struggled this summer to get it going. But next next year, we're, we'll, uh, we'll end up doing a fundraiser to, to, to bring more attention to men's health, I think. Uh, all health, obviously. But I think um, Ratsy will talk about this, too. But... Um, just being in tune with your body and aware of what's going on, and, and if something doesn't feel right, to make sure you uh, you're you're at least giving it the attention it needs. So um, I know, uh, obviously, one of the worst things that could happen, and and, and just uh, I think being a hockey player, it hurts uh, having a teammate. You know, yeah. I think I think this sport, you you just you're bred to take care of of your teammates, and and you just can't with something like that. But uh, He's doing better, and um, definitely, definitely uh, important to 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 be aware of of what's going on because it's it's real and it's dangerous. You know, you're an interesting cat, dude. Like, I, I mean, I I've been around a lot of professional athletes in my life, and you're not you're not normal. You're a you have an incredible personality. You have this incredible drive. Listening to you just jaw jack with the Rapid City bench the other night was unbelievable like what makes you tick who the heck is johnny walker because you are not your garden variety guy right uh takes a lot to to well i guess when i snap i snap but i uh i just like to have fun i uh i love when when the other team hates me it just it, it helps it really helps um you got a lot of help then the other night because uh, they were not fans of johnny uh, walker uh, i have <laughs> I have plenty of friends. I don't need any more. So, uh, no, I, uh, it's, it's a role. Um, I think uh, I'm pretty good at getting under someone's skin. I, I watch guys a lot and, and, and tendencies and, and how to, uh, to really piss someone off. So, um, yeah, if you ask my mom, I can irritate anyone. Uh, I, I'd, say, I'd say that's uh, – I, I, enjoy, I enjoy getting in, in, in people's heads for sure. What was the majority of the goals you scored at Arizona State? Were they one-timers in the circle? Were they deflections out in front of the net? What was kind of uh, your go-to uh, goal-scoring uh, maneuver? Uh, I, I mean, 70 goals. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, there was, there was a lot. I mean, obviously, it was given the opportunity to be on the power play um, and, and work in different spots. And we had a great team, great, great, I mean, it, it really, I just happened to be in, in that spot, whatever All it was. Team guy out there. Right. Yeah, it, right. <laughs> he, uh, no, but seriously, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's all everybody around me, really. And I was, uh, I was just a, 
a product of, of that and, and being in the right spot. You know, I, I think one of the other things is you do, you, you do a job on this team. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And how much pride do you take in that? Because you're not going to be the biggest guy that you are going to go up against. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're a grinder guy, you find yourself in a corner, you find yourself in front of the net. Like that's a tough way to make a living, dude. Like how, how, how much pride do you take in that? Oh, I love it. The, uh, it's supposed to be hard. If it were easy, right? Yeah. But uh, I, I love it. I, I like to compete. Um, I think that it just comes down to, to wanting it. And I uh, mm -hmm. do want it. Um, and, yeah, it's me or you, right? Especially at this level, at the, at the pro level, you're, you're trying to keep a job and absolutely anything to, to keep a job or anyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyone. Anyone. Yeah, not any, everyone, anyone. Um but yeah, it's uh, it is a job, and I, I love doing it. And maybe every once in a while, I can score a goal too to help out the boys. Nice. <laughs> How fun was the playoff? I know you weren't able to get in too many of the playoff games, but that playoff run uh, had to have been something else. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, again, like this year, just a great group, really great group. Uh, guys came to the work, the, the work, the rank, and worked. Uh, and when you have that compete every day, it just it's contagious. And I think that's what we saw last year, and you'll see this year is. Um, just a tight knit group that that wants to win, and that that that's all week too. I think we, we've got a, a professional group that comes in and, and and dialed, ready ready to work. Is that big? Is that a big part of the reason why so many guys decided to come back this year? I can only speak for myself. I I had an unbelievable experience here. I couldn't. Uh, I, I mean, just treated fans players, staff, everyone all together. I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't imagine going anywhere else. I, I love it here. So I'd imagine that the boys are, are the mm -hmm. exact same. Well, you know, it's interesting too, because we talked to you over the summer for, for a few minutes when you when you made that decision to come back. You do not look like you looked over the summer now. <laughs> like you've you've got you've got the beard on, like the hair is gone. Like how evolving is the look? Like are you a clothes guy? Are you a shoes guy? Cause you I gotta tell you not for nothing. You have amazing hair when your hair is in full form, dude. Yeah. Like, so what's the evolution of Johnny Walker's fashion and and his look? Uh, the hair was actually uh, to shave shave it along with Ratsy. A few of the boys shave their heads, so um, that's that's where that is. Uh, I I love clothes. I love shoes. I, yeah. uh, I think it's you got to be able to express yourself, do what you want when you want, and uh, everybody else can figure it out on their own right? it's uh <laughs> yes as soon as you're trying to to impress or please someone else it's there's an internal battle so i uh i get up and put on whatever i find and hopefully it matches nice <laughs> right? well hey we appreciate you stopping by thanks for uh sharing your story we'll talk to you soon thanks guys appreciate it. there you go johnny walker uh you know it's it's so it's so fascinating to me the the uh the dichotomy the differences in personalities um, of these of these guys, I mean, it absolutely makes the hockey club as uh, Jake gets uh, Garrett Metcalf on, on the hot the seat. Salt Lake City native, but before we get to Garrett, um, the thing about Joey Ratz is he was hit with a rare form of cancer uh, about uh, six months ago. That was, I think, in April or May uh, of 2022, and we're, we're certainly thinking of Joey Ratz, the former Grizzly, for sure. Yeah, and Johnny's done uh, John, Johnny's done a lot of work there, but the artist. Uh, known as as Garrett Metcalf joins us. Garrett, thanks for for joining us. How are things? How are you feeling, man? Good. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I uh, feel good. So it's good to get preseason over with. And you know, obviously we split the first weekend, and I think we could have came out with with both wins. But uh, good for the guys to get going here. What was your experience like in AHL camp with the Calgary Wranglers? Uh, I was good. It was hard because that was my first competitive skate in seven months. Uh, so obviously a little bit of an adjustment period, but it was good to uh, kind of dive in, especially at that pace. They're a very skilled team. Uh, so I was just very grateful for the opportunity. You know, you, you spent a lot of your summer rehabbing. You know, we've, we've talked about that a couple of times. Like, how much of a grind is that? Because I think you're out of sight, you're out of mind, so people don't really think about, you know, that, that you guys work. At, like, this has been a, this has been a year-long thing for you. Like, it's been a grind. So mentally, how are you doing? And physically, how are you doing with your shoulder? Yeah, I feel great. Uh, I don't have the strength that I had before uh, surgery, but I think that's, I mean, I can't expect anything other than that, but the mobility is great. Uh, I feel pretty good on the ice. It was good to get in the one preseason game that I did get to play. Uh, I felt a little rusty, but I, again, I think that's to be expected. 
Um, so just continuing still, even every day, trying to get in the gym, uh, taking it easy, making sure I'm taking care of my body with calling and rehabbing afterwards too, uh, just to feel 100%. I don't know how much you remember about your pro debut, which was like a Sunday afternoon at Maverick Center. I think we were playing Tulsa, and, and um, I remember somebody was like, he's a little bit nervous in the parking lot before the game, and you went out and played a, a great game. What do you remember about your pro debut? Uh, I remember that my family was here, which is very special, because for those that know, my dad refed pro hockey for 26 years, so I grew up coming here to the old East Center with my older brother watching my dad ref. Uh, like you said, it was against Tulsa. We won 3-2 to two in overtime. Uh, I remember Tim and Ryan bringing me into the coach's office after and asking how it was and uh, playing at Mercyhurst and then LIU. We were the last place teams in college hockey. So I think on average, I faced like 37 shots for those last two years. And I think it was like 12 shots going into the third period. So wow. it was completely different. Yeah, totally 100, 180 degree difference. Uh, so for me, just trying to stay in the game mentally. Um, and like you said, maybe a little bit of nerves before, but after I got that first shot, I felt like I settled in great. And uh, obviously to get your first pro win at home, considering everything I just said, family, family in attendance was very special for me. Is it easier as a goaltender to face a lot of shots or, you know, is it one of those you get in more of a rhythm than as opposed to a game where you're probably seeing 20 to 25 shots? Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd say one's easier than the other. I think when you're used to one and then the other happens, it's definitely a bit of an adjustment mentally. Like what do you do to keep yourself busy and stay in the game? Um, but especially if, if you have games where there's a lot of shots, sometimes they're from the outside, um, it's a lot easier. You feel pucks, you start to build that confidence. Or if you have less shots, some of them are a little bit more grade A's, maybe you give up a goal or two, you definitely feel it a little bit. You know, the interesting, the interesting thing about you is you're a big frame guy. You are not a small guy. Like, what are, what are the challenges in, in being a bigger goaltender? Um, I don't know, challenges. I think just goaltending in general, if you can, you know, learn to – be a great skater and trust your skating and play the angles. Um, I think it's ultimately going to help you. And I think that for me and my size plays into that, uh, uh, you know, in, in a positive way. So I'm very grateful for the size that I have. And I think for how big I am, I can move really well too. So I think it helps. What do you remember about your draft day experience getting picked by the Ducks a um, few years ago? Uh, what was, I was that in, day like? I was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with my goalie coach at the time, Shane Clifford. I was watching the draft on TV and, uh, you know, the first two rounds, they kind of pick the guys and show it on TV. But the later rounds, they're just kind of going through the interviews. So you're watching the bottom part of the screen where it says the next pick is. And I was trying to watch it. And I remember my agent at the time called me and I was like, what is he doing? Like, I'm trying to look at the draft here, looking at it on my phone. And I, I answered and I said, what's up? And he said, you know, what just happened. And I said, no. And he said, you were just picked by Anaheim. And he said, congratulations. And I said, thanks. And, you know, immediately after my phone started blowing up and try to take a break and call my dad and tell him what happened. And obviously he was very excited and uh, very grateful for the opportunity for that. I still don't think today it's hit me what really happened. Um, you know, obviously a blessing. So not, not every day can someone say that they were an NHL draft pick. So a very humbling experience for sure. Is it a lifelong dream? Is that like the, it, it, I mean, like, what has your hockey journey been like? Is it, were you working up to that moment? I mean, was that something that you had grinded for and dreamed of? What was that What was that journey like for you? Yeah, I never thought that I'd be an NHL draft pick. My last year playing U18 AAA with the Colorado Rampage, I was the backup. I think I played 10 games that year. Um, my nickname was Coach G because I was just the most positive guy on the team. Um, <laughs> and then that next summer, I went to the Madison Capitals main camp and ended up making the team. Um, so from then on, you know, I, I had been pretty successful and done well, but I didn't really think that being an NHL draft pick was really in the picture. Uh, I got drafted at 19, which is my second draft year, which I think is even rarer. Um, and I didn't realize it could possibly be a thing that was going to happen until I got a call from Vancouver and Detroit and started kind of interviewing with a couple of these teams. And then my head coach at the time, Norm Bazin from Lowell, uh, called me and said he wanted to fly out and talk to me and my family. He flew out on like a Thursday to my little house here in Salt Lake City and tried to convince me to come into school a year early because they thought I was going to get drafted and they wanted me to finish my schooling before I... I turned pro, so I think that's kind of when it hit me that it was a possibility. What is it about Coach Ganasiewicz, and really, what what, what is, you, know, you think about all the players that returned from last season's club? What do you think is the the reason why so many guys decide to want to come back? I think Coach Ganasiewicz has done a great job, and I think that's a big part of why guys wanted to come back. I think Utah's a great place to live. I think it's a fun place to play. If you look at travel, uh, I think it's some of the best in the league. We fly basically almost everywhere. Um, and I think Coach Ryan does a great job. He's a player's coach. He, he played for so long. He knows 
he knows what those guys are feeling mentally, physically. Um, so when we need days off, he, he gives us days off. And uh, just the little things, like we have the golf tournament, or last year we went ice fishing. Uh, so he tries to get the guys outside of their comfort zone and together doing something together. And I think that just brings us even closer together. And I think that's a big reason why our group is so close to returners. And then the new guys, I think it's easy for them to mesh in because of all the things that we do. So I, I think he's done a phenomenal job. That's so fascinating you say that because one of the things I think has been so interesting about getting to know this team is everybody's got something. There's such a diverse group of guys. I've really enjoyed talking to you about your art and looking at your art and like, so before we let you go, talk about that a little bit. How did you, how did you become an artist? How did you become a guy that draws and paints? And what, what does it do for you? What is the reason you love it so much? Yeah, so I joke because uh, in high school, I think there, I took every art class you possibly could, advanced art, basic art, whatever it was. Uh, I just really enjoyed it. I found it fascinating. I'm really into realism, uh, hyper-realism specifically. I don't think I'm quite there yet. There's some artists out there that are pretty incredible. Um, but as far as what it does, it just, you know, takes my mind off of everything that we go through day to day. You know, we come here, we work out, we skate. It's a lot of hockey, hockey, hockey. So uh, when I get to sit down and just dive into art, I could be drawing for eight hours in a day and just listen to music. And it feels like three hours and you look at your phone and you're like, man, I just sat there for six, seven, eight hours. Uh, so for yeah. me, it's just a great way to pass the time. And uh, I think that I've gotten better as, you know, my time has gone on. So I just continue to try to push the envelope and and develop my skill in doing that well and i as i think i've i've told you that the mask that you wear you know with the game of thrones and the peaky blinders i think is just phenomenal number one because those are two of my favorite shows but it just seems to be such a a, a a lovely piece do you have a favorite thing that you've you've drawn or i mean what's your favorite piece that you've done uh so i did a pair of jordan shoes for my girlfriend that kind of have like red dripping off the toes that's probably the favorite piece i've done so far um, again, just realism if I can. I love using graphite. Uh, I started getting into painting a little bit. Mm. Uh, painted a picture of Juice World this summer uh, and really enjoyed that. So again, trying to expand my horizon on, on the mediums that I'm using um, in art and just continue to push the envelope. Garrett, great talking to you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for having me. You bet. There you go. Garrett Metcalf. And I happen to, he, you know, he painted a, a Peaky Blinders character that I'm a huge fan of, Thomas Shelby. I'm a huge Thomas Shelby guy. So looking at that on his, and if you don't follow these guys on Twitter, you really should. Uh, but Garrett Metcalf's Twitter is, uh, is phenomenal. And then he rolls in here wearing a, wearing a Dodger hat, an L.A. hat. <laughs> How we living? How we feeling? Good. Yeah, it's a good day. Yeah. Second Bowling Green product in the house as we had Cameron Wright a little bit uh, earlier on. He led the team with 13 shots. I talked to him a little bit about uh, Cameron before the, the first game, but uh, those first two games, he certainly seemed to stand out. Talons up, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I noticed you have your dog. Like, yeah. what's your... Bo was uh, Bo's out there. He came for me today. He's uh, he's three and a half months. So yeah. It's been, uh, it's been a dream of mine. I got to figure out what, what, what Bo was named after. Uh, Bo in French is uh, beautiful, so... Wow, nice. If you could pull that mic a little closer to you, that would be awesome. Um, so, I, you know, like, this is... We've been talking a lot about this club and a lot about the organization and whatnot, so... You know, walk me through this locker room. Like, what feels good about this group of guys? Yeah, um, I know Colorado does a good job of signing guys on two ways, which helps us out. And, but I mean, they are they're good guys. Um, there's a lot of pros in that locker room. A lot of guys could have had a letter. Um, huge honor for me to have that. Yeah. Um, had one last year, and uh, but yeah, I, do, I mean, I don't do anything out of the ordinary. Just be a good teammate, be a good guy, and uh, I mean, at the end of the day. We're just out there having fun. And you know, that's what your coach says about you. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. He told us, uh, Coach Kanasiewicz told us, you just do everything well. Yeah. Um, that you're, I mean, do you take pride in that leadership when yeah, you hear I your think, coach uh, say that? a lot of it's just habits. Um, I mean, that's kind of what being a pro is about, doing things the right way. And a lot of guys in that room, I should say everyone in that room does, does things the right way. And I think that's why we're so successful at, at times. And yes, I know things can get rocky and, but I mean, that's hockey. It's a game of mistakes. And uh, as, as mm -hmm. long as we can cut down on those, I think we can put together uh, something special again. There were some interesting memories and moments from last season. Lucas Preak wanted to talk about his 46 save shutout quite a bit in late December. <laughs> he didn't really want to go into the Brady DeVries game much, uh, the, the emergency goaltender. How crazy was that night? Yeah, I don't, four think, to three? Uh, I don't think they made it to the conference final, but I know we did. So <laughs> wow. That's all, that's all I, I got to say that. about that. 
<laughs> Love it. What was your favorite moment from last season? Yeah, um, I just think Snatch being a newer head coach, he just kind of got it and just like knows what we're going through as young men, honestly. And um, I know their age ranges, but at the end of the day, we're still a bunch of kids, a bunch of boys just trying to have fun. And we like being together. We like doing things off the ice. And I think being so close off the ice and in the room kind of makes us want to work harder for each other on the ice and stick up for one another. So it's a good fit. Um, a lot of good boys in that locker room. You know, it's, it's funny you talk about Ryan as a, as a new coach. I mean, it, we talked to a lot of guys over the summer and everybody talked about the playoff run, the group of guys and coach. So when you look back, like has all of that translated? Is all of that still here? Yeah, I think um, with how many guys we have returning, it kind of gave us, kind of were able to hit the ground running. And um, obviously a lot of these teams are having new rosters and stuff. And then we have a lot of returning guys. So hit the ground running with that. And like I said, Snatch just gets it. He, he knows when we need rest. He knows when we need pushed. Um, I think that's why Salt Lake City and the Utah Grizzlies is so special. Yeah. The eight-game road trip that's coming up, uh, that's – it's going to be an interesting one over the next three weeks. Uh, but on the road, is there anything you do different than, you know, your routine at home? It's funny. We just uh, – because we usually get to the airport around, like, 5 a.m. So, um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we just kind of just pack a bag and we're together. Uh, we're in the airport all day together. We're in the hotel all day. We're practicing. We're getting food in different cities. And um, I just think that's uh, it's a big part of a team and uh, it's hard to come by I think in pro hockey just because so many guys are on different paths and guys are up and they're down and um, but yeah we just uh, take it a day at a time and it's enjoyable. You know call me crazy I think Saturday night was a really important game yes you needed to win all that great stuff you won that feels good there were some moments in that game where your guys were tested there were some moments in that game where it would have been easy. And I think we saw this from Rapid a little bit where they lost themselves. Yeah. They gave you guys so many opportunities to win that game. And they gave themselves so little opportunities. What is that particular game and the atmosphere of that game say about your club? Yeah, I think going back to Friday, just real quick, I think uh, we did too many, just too many little mistakes that I think cost us. We kind of shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, Saturday comes around, I think we do those little things the right way. We get pucks in, we're, you know, our system wide, we're dialed in that. Um, and I think that was kind of the difference maker in, in that Saturday win compared to Friday. So, yeah. I think the Cam Wright thing, though, was really interesting. Yeah. Because they clearly wanted some of Cam Wright. Yeah. Ryder's, uh, he's a good little player. I mean, I play with him at BG. He's, uh, he's that guy to get in your face, to be hard on, fight you for it. He's not just going to one try, one and done type thing. But uh, yeah, Ryder, it took a little beating, but he played good this weekend, I thought. Did you know that you were going to be the captain of this team? Did you know, like, and what was that moment like for you? Yeah, I, I talked to Snatch a little bit over the summer and we just kind of uh, texted back and forth just about coming and getting excited again. And um, I knew I wore a letter last year and um, he actually just kind of called me in and was like, hey, we're going to name assistants and captains today and I want you to be our captain. And uh, but, yeah, huge honor. <clears throat> I really love Salt Lake City. I love the Grizzlies. I love uh, it's just a really good organization with a lot of good guys. Did you root for a lot of the Ohio teams? And if so, which Ohio teams did you root for? Are you more like Cleveland or yeah, more like Yeah, I, uh, I actually lived in Cleveland this summer with my girlfriend, so uh, I'm a big, uh, big Browns guy now. I yeah, have I been in the past a little bit, but not. Uh, I've never lived there, but to see it, just being in the city, it was uh, it was pretty cool. I was stalking your Twitter this afternoon a little bit, and there's a lot of Columbus. There's some Rick Nash stuff on there, <laughs> and like, there's yeah. just it's just not necessary. I don't see any Blackhawks stuff on there. Oh, like, man. frankly, yeah. being a Chicago guy, like you know, yeah. I played for the Chicago still in the U.S. Yeah, I was. Uh, I played in Chicago for basically two years um, with the Steel, and eventually went to Youngstown and did a little playoff run there, but. Uh, but yeah, I'm a uh, big Columbus fan. Yeah. I got some buddies on that team and good guys and just kind of guys I've grown up with. So What was it like a couple of years ago playing for the Cleveland Monsters? Yeah, that was a really big uh, dream come true for me. Um, being raised in Columbus and being in the American League for the Blue Jackets was pretty cool. Wow. Unfortunately, I had a little injury that set me back, but... Um, yeah, stronger and better than ever now. You know, and I, I'm in in all seriousness. I'm like, you're not getting any younger. 
Yeah. You're not old, but you're at a really important time in your career. Have you thought, have you looked forward? Have you thought about, have yeah. you, have you had that conversation with yourself? Um, I think a little bit, it, I think it kind of comes around like every summer you just kind of think like, like, what else would I be doing? Um, but yeah, I just turned 27 yesterday. I'm definitely oh, happy not, birthday. Thank man. you. I'm not getting any younger. Um, but I think that's kind of, I mean, you gotta be a pro. You gotta take care of yourself, take care of your body and. I'll uh, try and play as long as I can. You have to have the, the, <laughs> the wry smile kind of says a yeah. lot, but I mean, you have to have some vision forward. I mean, it, it, do you, what drives you? I mean, you've played a lot of hockey in your life and that's not, I, I say that because hockey hurts. You may yeah. know that oh, yeah. oh, hockey yeah. hurts, right? So like, what do you, what is driving you? I think just, um, I mean, my dream is to be a professional hockey player. It's what it's been since I was four or five years old, doing playing roller hockey, playing, finally getting into ice hockey, doing travel, doing juniors, doing college, doing pro. Yeah. And, um, I don't think a lot of guys get to do this. And um, so, yeah, I'm just going to try and enjoy it while I can. And when that next step in my life comes, I'll hit it head on. Yeah. So your, I've seen your family's been pretty supportive on – Social media. What's yes. uh, what's your family mean to you? Oh man, um, yeah, it sucks uh, leaving leaving for the season every year. It gets a little emotional, just because I got little brother, little sister, older sister with kids. Um, my parents have been a huge part of my career. I literally would not be here without them. So, um, but yeah, it stinks to to say bye. But they love watching. They, I mean, my dad will leave work early to be home. Computer better be set up with the TV ready to go. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna try and uh, we're gonna try and get him out here this year. It's, yeah, you have to. It's a long flight, so uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, before we let you go, let's talk about food. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. What do you like? What do you eat? What's your go-to? Like, what do you? Here in town, I like uh, Noodles and Company for pregame. Okay. A little, um, Montreal chicken there. Okay. Um, some Alfredo. Um, on the road, chicken parm. Uh, I, I mean, never I, go I think, wrong. I think I was raised on chicken parm. I yeah. had chicken parm in juniors, had it all throughout college. Um, so, yeah, that's probably my. Do you have a favorite food city? Oh, man. Because I'm a Chicago guy, and my favorite food city is not Chicago. I went to San Diego to visit a buddy a couple years back. Let's go. Dude, and I, we had, me and my girlfriend, we went on like, I mean, I was almost like a food tour. Yeah. And, uh, had a couple steakhouses and I mean it's just unbelievable. No, there's a little hole in the wall in Old Town called Los Coyotes. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I I, I I'm mad I don't know the name of the restaurant oh, we went to, but so it was good. dynamite. So good. Well, good to see you, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, you. I've I'm, I've enjoyed getting to know you a little yeah. bit. So thanks for being here. Thank you. This is awesome. Awesome setup. Nice. Thanks, guys. Stay healthy. Enjoy Boise. Heck yeah. There you go, uh, Captain Connor McDonald. Yeah, you're good to go. Thanks, um, you know, it's it's interesting that you, you, all of these stories, hockey is not just like a thing that guys do. Hockey is life. And I think a lot of people, Tyson, forget the dedication that it takes just to be here, to be in this moment right now. I think a lot of people forget how hard it is to get here. Yeah, well, you talk about juniors, you talk about the sacrifice of maybe moving to different cities, you know, Garrett Metcalf moving to other places. You know, you, you go juniors, you're 16 or 17 years old, and all of a sudden, you move into a different part of the country, you know, you don't really, you know, you think about some of those other things and you go to college. I mean, to get to this point, it just seems like it's just, there's so much work and so much effort that goes into it. And I'm really excited to see Bryson Martin here. He's been a former third round pick uh, of a few years ago. Uh, how everything's going. Things are good. I'm excited to be here. Thank yeah. You. And if you could tilt that mic down a little bit for me, that'd be great. Be our audio engineer. There you go. Um, you know, we, it was great talking to you the other day, um, as you were dying after doing, doing drills, like how, how tough is hockey? Cause we were just talking to Connor about this. Like, I think people don't realize, I think people think physical, they think football, but like hockey's hard, like it's hard on your body and you guys work really hard. So how do you stay in shape and how much of, how much of a pounding is hockey on your body every year? I mean, it, it's a grind for sure. Um, I actually hockey, you the contact is at a higher speed too. So there's there's obviously risk of injury and obviously we got all that good equipment to keep ourselves safe. But uh, at the same time, there's no there's no cardio like skating. Hmm. A, a long shift in hockey is, I would say is probably the equivalent to doing like a mile run. 
and you can you can run and bike all summer but it's not going to transition you're still going to be sucking wind on the ice and and especially here i mean me being from calgary obviously there is a little bit of elevation but uh not quite as much as here so uh the elevation has definitely uh, been a pretty big transition and i'm still still feeling it quite a bit i know there's been a little bit of a bug going around and uh that doesn't help either no but uh no, the boys are the boys are rallying here, and everybody's starting to get back their game shape. And uh, I'm excited for what the future is. With as little as we see the Eastern Conference, you know, I know you played in the Eastern Conference quite a bit uh, over the last few years. Had you ever been to Utah before uh, coming with the Grizzlies? No, I've been on two teams that have made the trick the the trek out here, and both times, unfortunately, I was injured. So uh, I've never played in this rink until until here, and uh, I've actually only played one or two of the teams in the division actually so oh, wow. this is all this is all new especially being like this is my sixth year in the league and playing the same teams over and over and over again you'd think that you'd get the opportunity to play some of those teams you don't get to but i haven't so this is all new for me and i'm very excited and especially being from calgary like i said this is close this is the closest place to home for me and it's very exciting for me and my family you know, talk about your hockey journey a little bit because I, one of the things I've really enjoyed today is the guys have come through is hearing about people's journeys. So, like, when did you know that hockey was your thing? I mean, I, obviously, growing up in Calgary, that's a massive hockey market. Um, I grew up hating Theron Fleury with everything that I had in my body because I was a Blackhawk fan. Like, And it, so when you, you look at your youth, like, when did you know hockey was a thing for you? When did you get the bug? Um I actually, when I, when I first started, like the first time on skates, you always hear the story of like, from that day, you love it, but no, it's hard and it's challenging and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to actually improve and start to see those improvements and like start to create that separation. And I mean, I credit my dad a lot. He, uh, he understood that he couldn't just force me into it. He had to he had to do a few things here and there and like kind of like take me to a take me to a Flames game or take me to a Calgary Hitman game, which was the junior team there. And just kind of like teach me to love the game before before my heart was completely into it. But once once I start it started to transition and I started to like see myself because like I was always like a pretty lanky kid and I was a little bit bigger than a lot of the guys I was playing against. Like I one of my good friends, Braden Point, who plays on Tampa Bay. And growing up, we played spring hockey together. We played winter hockey together. We were on a team for every single year up until we went to juniors. And sure enough, he ends up in Moose Jaw and I end up in Swift Current. So I'm an hour and a half away from him, playing him 10 times a year. So you go from, <laughs> you go from practicing with this guy and you know, working off of each other to being key rivals and being on the ice against each other where you got to put that friendship aside. But... Uh, no, hockey was hockey from the get-go was a little bit. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't what I expected it to be right from the get-go. But it, yeah. I credit my dad a lot, and the love for the game grew as well as the skill. And from a young age, I was I was fortunate enough to have be very involved in a lot of successful programs, and that helped me transition to where I went to Bantam. And you kind of you you grow up watching these junior teams, and you're like, oh, like. I want to play there. Like I want to play in the saddle dome against the hitmen or for the hitmen. And that brings us to the Western league draft where at 14 is a young age to commit yeah. to somebody for, for that. And going through that process, I was just a kid playing hockey. And then sure enough, it's a month before the draft and newspaper article comes out and the hometown team has the first overall pick and your name's there as a potential first overall oh, pick. Man. And you're like, this could be a dream come true. I could live at home. I could become a man at my own pace. I'm not just going to be a 16 year old who moves away from home. And it all came about and they decided to go with a forward, all two of them. He's a, uh, he was a good player. And uh, I was very fortunate enough to go to Swift Current and get an opportunity right from the get go. And um, from there it was, uh, from there it was history. You know, I bounced around a, little bit later in the career kind of just trying to find a new new spot and a new opportunity for myself and throughout those opportunities I kind of grew as a player and grew as a man yeah and 
it wasn't until pro where I started to face a little bit of adversity, obviously being a third round pick, only defenseman drafted by my team. There's a little bit of pressure there, but there's also <laughs> a lot of confidence in your ability. They're like, we don't need another guy. You, you, this guy can be it. And then you go through the, the dark times. Obviously, Buffalo had, a, had some dark times there. It's nice to see them turning it around. But in my tenure there, I went through three GMs, four yeah. head coaches. You don't ever really get a chance to kind of build that relationship and build that build that trust but so much of success in sports is where you land i exactly. mean you're ta- you, you you wouldn't be sitting here if you weren't talented but if you're not put into the right developmental system given the right atmosphere like that cohesiveness i mean do, do you feel like that impacted your career um to an extent yes i mean a lot of the onus has to as i've grown up and matured a lot of the onus has to go on me like like i said i didn't face much adversity growing up I was always the go-to guy. I was always playing an enormous amount of minutes. Like, I remember when I was a kid, like, Braden Point's dad was actually my coach, and we were in a key game, and we didn't wow. lose. We, we didn't lose. We had a season where we lost one game, and it was in the provincial finals. So we were the juggernaut team, and there was times where it would be the third period, and I would be skating to the bench harder than some of my shifts would be just because I needed water because they wouldn't let me change. So there's, there's a few good stories there, but all in all, I wish going back on it, just putting the onus on myself because that's all you can control. You can't control other people's opinion on you Mm -hmm. and you can't control their outlook on on you and whatnot. So I put a lot of onus on myself growing up and, uh, I wish I would have faced adversity sooner. So I would have learned how to deal with it and not just be this, this guy who had it, who had it easy because. I rode my talent for as long as I could, and then it starts to get very competitive, and you start facing that adversity. And me, be moving away from home at 16 was difficult. Obviously, billet system, depending on your billet system, you get a new parental figure. And my first couple of years, I didn't have that. They were very laid back, and I actually very, very much appreciated them. It allowed me to kind of figure things out for myself but at the same time you need that parental figure to be like hey like you can't you can't eat that pizza or <laughs> hey you need to be right. going, you need to be going to bed earlier or, yeah you don't need to be you don't need to be talking to girls but also SH, now but, you're here though man like I, I mean it all it's all formative right i mean i think anyway so no, it, it, it definitely is but uh I th- i'd say the biggest thing for me is yes i definitely think I, my situation could have been handled a little bit better but I'm not going to sit here and whine about that because at the end of the day, it's on me. It's on me to show up every day prepared. It's on my. It's on me to be engaged, coachable, approachable. All all those key intangibles that go into making like you see the National Hockey League players. You see how well spoken they are. You see how well they take care of themselves, and all that. And obviously, having money helps with that. Yeah. But. At the same time, anybody can do it. They've been a lot of those players have been in this situation, and they found a way to do it. And that's that's the journey that we're at now. It's as you age, you understand that it doesn't last forever, and you got to make the most of what you have. And I think that's the biggest thing going into this year is playing six years in this league. I've only played three playoff games. I see this team as a very deep team. You obviously look at the run that they had last year. You see the tight-knit group impacting how many guys came back. And being a new piece in that, you kind of have to find your role in that. And I told myself going in, I was like, this isn't going to be like it was in different situations where you were heavily relied upon. You have guys who can be relied upon. So you have to find where you fit best and you have to contribute what you can to make the team as a whole successful. And I look at this team and it's very deep. Everybody's very close. And I think it has the mitts to be a very, very successful team. And it's just what we take out of that each day and guys buying in and throwing the egos and the pride aside and just making those sacrifices that are gonna make this team be able to do what they did last year. Yep. How have you liked it here in Utah so far? I know it's only been a few weeks. So, it's, well, it's actually funny. So my girlfriend um, is actually born Mormon. 
She's, oh, wow. she's no longer Mormon, but her family is still very, very involved in the church. So they have ties here. And like her cousins come out here and visit. So that'll be a, a cool experience. We'll go get to have Thanksgiving with them. And we'll get them to kind of show us show us the areas we need to go. I know we were driving downtown and she was like, you want to go see the temple? And it was nighttime and they only have it available, like viewing for walking. So that'll be something we'll check out next time we go down. But all in all, I've heard nothing but good things. And obviously you see the scenery, you see the mountains and you see all that. And it's just such a beautiful place to live. And yeah. I think I think the happier you are in your living situation, the happier you're going to be with your life. And obviously that transitions into hockey. So I'm well, very optimistic. And we can't let you go without talking about the dog, uh, obviously. So you, you have a new dog, you have a little guy, like what, what was the, what's, what was the reason you got a, a dog and what'd you name it and how did all that happen? So funny enough. So he's our second dog. We have another one named Bauer at home, but, uh, He's very, very close with my parents' dog, and he spends a lot of time there. And we got the backyard at home. His life is his life is at home, and I've let him stay home every single year. And then this year, we were just kind of looking looking online, and it, we saw a good price. And it's the breed that obviously we, our family really does enjoy. And we kind of just impulse because at the time you're supposed to buy the dog from eight to twelve weeks for training purposes. And he was just about to turn 12 weeks old. So we were like, mm. if we're going to get him, we got to get him now. So we ended up getting him and we brought him home and he didn't have a second vaccination. Just because of the timing, you get the vaccination on the eighth week, the 12th week and the 16th week. And we got him on the 12th week. So we booked him in with our vet and they didn't have any availability. So we had to wait a week. And sure enough, the worst possible outcome happens. And the little guy gets part, what we call parvovirus or oh, the no. puppy killer. So yeah. we were, uh, he, he had to spend some uh, time in the hospital there and a uh, little bit of money on the side. I was going to say that was cost effective. Yeah, it's very, very cost effective. <laughs> but obviously we're very thrilled that he's, he's alive and well and he's starting to come around and lighten up to people. And the decision, he actually was only going to be coming to visit because it is so close to home. It's a 12-hour drive. But uh, after talking it over with my girlfriend and whatnot, she's not too confident with the drive during the season being majority during the winter months. Yeah, of course. So we made the split second decision to bring them and made sure everything was going smooth. And obviously he gets to come to the rink now and he loves it here. He's getting to know all the guys. We got other dogs on the team, him and yep. McDonald's dog, Bo, are best buds. They're wrestling all day, all night. <laughs> So it's fun. It's a new experience. It gives me a new sense of responsibility, gets me outside, and all in all, I love it. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you, man. It's been great getting to talk to you and know you a little bit. Thanks for being here and stay healthy. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You bet. There you go. Bryson Martin uh, joins us on the the show. The dog community in, on this team is pretty stout yeah it's Tyson. something else i mean the constant is molly you know ryan kanasiewicz's dog but then it just seems like as the years go on you see one dog after another and they're all just spectacular but how about bryce and martin you talking about an impressive impressive guy i mean former third round pick of buffalo and all the experiences he's been with you know through and it's been certainly a lot of fun getting to know him but uh you talk about a guy that had a hat trick three goals in the division championship clinching game the next to last game of the regular season obviously it's dakota raby and uh, Dakota, that experience there, the hat trick, the first three goals, what do you remember about that night? No, it was, uh, that was actually a pretty special night. Uh, my family was actually out here, um, and it was actually the first game that I scored, and then I ended up getting two more after that. So it kind of just put the, the cherry on top, and, and the fact that we got the win and clinched the division there, it was a pretty special moment. I have to ask you, first of all, can you pull that mic a little closer to you? But I have to ask you about your Twitter feed. Because I asked because the picture is you and your, your Michigan guys and crispy uniform as a Notre Dame fan. It's hard for me to say that out loud. Uh, but you, did you play in the outdoor game? Like, tell me the Michigan hockey experience that you had. No, it was, uh, that was a really, really cool experience. Um, unfortunately, it was during Notre Dame spring break, so it wasn't as packed as it probably should have been. But mm -hmm. um, it was still a really good crowd. Um, just walking out there, we got to practice the day before out there on the outdoor rink and then going into the game, 
Um, we were able to grab a win as well, which was special. Um, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, and no, I had a pretty good game that game. It was um, really cool experience. I'll definitely remember that for a lifetime. Well, in Michigan hockey is kind of a big deal because they like I, we tweeted a photo or a video of you hitting a golf ball last week. They were all over that. Like they like it, it seems like that's a really tight knit community that you that that you have. Yeah, they I mean, their social media is number one in college hockey as well. So it's they're they're on top of it. They're even with alumni, they're always they're always reposting, they're always making sure that, you know, the guys that were here previous are, you know, still getting recognized and um, I think that just goes a long way and shows that just the culture and everything that they have there and the reputation that they've built you know, there's a reason why. So, yeah, it was such a fun playoff run last year. And then so many guys decided to come back. Uh, what went into your decision to want to return to Utah? I just, um, I know I liked Ryan the way he, um, when I first came in, he just gave me an opportunity right away. Um, you know, I said not to worry about making any mistakes or anything like that, just kind of play my game. And I think that allowed me to settle into the pro level a little better and, you know, kind of get those nerves out that I had at the, at the start and just the, the overall experience here was amazing. Like all the guys were very welcoming. There's not, not a ton of egos or anything like that. Like guys want each other to succeed, which is, um, which is a culture and a group you want to be a part of. So it was just a, I knew it was the right decision to come back. Um, I think it's good for my development and opportunity as well to progress uh, my hockey career. You know, one of the interesting things about you is you're, you're never going to be the biggest guy. You're never going to be the strongest guy. You're almost always the fastest guy. But like you have a skill set. You find your way into that place, wherever that place might be, whether that's the corner. Um, you know, you, like, you have really, it seems to me, found your game. And it, it, I've, obviously, I've only been watching you for weeks now, but you're, you're a better hockey player today than you were the first practice of, of training camp. Like, how much of a grinder are you? Because you strike me as a guy who, who doesn't rest very often. Yeah, I mean, so I think it goes back to even when I was in Michigan, um, kind of the role that I had there was more defensive and kind of that grinding role, just using my speed to be on the forecheck and everything like that. And I think as I've progressed in college and then now to the pro level, I can use my speed more and that confidence to just get that next level for my game. And I think... Like now I have a lot more confidence in it. I mean, I trust my skating. I trust um, my shot and everything now. So I think confidence is probably the biggest thing. And, and once you have a little bit of success, it's easy to uh, you know, keep rolling with that. So, and I look forward to doing that the rest of this year. After four years at Michigan, you transferred to Sacred Heart University. Was that kind of a graduate transfer type of scenario? What was that like uh, transitioning from Michigan to Sacred Heart? Yeah, it was definitely an adjustment in terms of um, treatment and, you know, the <laughs> – going from flying charter to, you know, hopping on a bus to games. But it was humbling for sure. Um, and I think it, you know, everything happens for a reason. I think I went there to just develop more and kind of put a fire under me a little bit to, you know, cause once going from Michigan to there is, I, to me, it felt like a setback. But, you know, looking back on it now, I think because of the COVID year and everything, it, it allowed me to do what I wanted and, progress as a hockey player as well think about the mental part of what you just said though it felt like a setback like you played that in your mind like multiple times so you you also strike me as somebody who is not just you know you you seem like you're you think inside you're introspective you look at the you take those things very seriously like yeah. how important was that how how did that conversation play out in your head and and at the end of the day do you ever look back on that and wish you had done something different like talk through that um, I mean, for me, like a lot of part of it was the vaccination as well. Like I, Sacred Heart was a Catholic school, so it allowed me, I got a religious exemption for it. And that played a factor as well. And, um, you know, just with, with hockey, I knew if I got out of there and made it to pro, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're good, they're going to find you. So I, yeah, I probably didn't put up the numbers that I wanted to there, but you know, it got me here and I can't complain about that. And then, <laughs> and then since I got here, I was able to, you know, to put up more points than I did in 10 games than I did all of college of Sacred Heart that year. So I think it just, the pro games kind of helped my game. I think I transitioned to it better than college, but 
you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm thankful yep. for it. Truly blessed for sure. One of the things you remember most about the Grizzlies playoff run last year. I mean, that was, a, that was, that was quite the run going all the way to the Western conference finals. And oh, yeah, I, was, I remember that game too, against rapid city down by one and then scoring the two goals in the final minutes. What were some of the biggest memories you have of, of that playoff run? No, just each series. It was, it's a battle. I mean, every it's seven games. So, and that's the, that's the great thing about hockey is any team can win. It's, you know, a lot of it comes down to who wants a more work ethic and, and I think we just showed that even if we went through adversity, we were able to kind of come through it, bounce back, and, you know, make the run that we did. And we had a lot of success, and it was good to see the guys that, you know, who had a big role on that team, you know, go to places afterwards and have success as well. So it was just exciting to see everybody who's back and who have moved on. Dakota, one of the other things I think that I've enjoyed about your game is you tend to get the puck to the net. You, you're not a guy like that there's – Guys like you, you, you have to do it right. Like you have, you have smaller margin for error because you're not going to be a, a first line guy. So, how much pride do you take in that? Because I mean, I thought you were pretty sensational in, in Boise in the preseason. That was that. I thought that was a strong performance for you. Like, how much pride do you take in in doing it the right way and getting pucks to the net? Yeah, I think you know doing the little things and doing it the right way, as you said, it it transitions into getting those chances and getting you know a goal or an assist like that. I think just doing the little things and defensive playing defense first, if it, it find the offense finds itself there and it, it tends to find you when you are doing the right thing. So I think it's just important to stick with it. And even though, you know, if things aren't going your way, it's, it's a long season. I mean, we got 70 games left, so, yeah. you know, you can't, can't get too high, get, get too low. So you just have to, you know, enjoy the moment and, you know, just be thankful for, being able to play because I mean a lot of guys are getting injured and you know I've been injured too so it's like I just happy to play and you yep. know be a big part of the team you know one of the other fun things to watch about you is you had a sidestep I think in Boise where there was a guy coming and you just stopped but the other thing that's fun to watch about you is you I think you enjoy throwing your body around I think you yeah. like putting it on a guy like and and the the wry smile right there I think <laughs> does say it like it's it's a really enjoyable part of your game because you play with a, th a certain, I don't know if the word's thunder, but you you don't miss very often, it doesn't seem like. How much do you enjoy being physical? No, I, I think the physicality really just kind of gets me more engaged into the game. Like, it makes me just feel like I'm into it and kind of gets my energy level. I'm, I'm not, like, lackadaisical. Like, so I think physicality is a big part, and, I, like, being smaller – I know it's harder for them to hit me as well because I can, you know, cut back and do little slips. Come and on, stuff. that Boise thing was amazing. <laughs> do you yeah. do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, there, yeah. I think you were right outside of your blue line, yeah. and he had you lined up, yeah. and you just whoop, you stopped. That was one of the best things I think I've seen so far. Well, I try to. I mean, a lot of it's just a lot of times they think your head's down or whatever, but you know, I'm always kind of looking, kind of keeping my head on a swivel, so try and lure them on a little bit and then use my skating to, you know, do those quick stops or things like that to get around them. And then, you know, it tires them out too, cause then they got to chase me back. So yeah. it's, uh, it's good. No, you learn that pretty quickly. Keep your head up. <laughs> yeah, keep your, absolutely. Keep your head up. Uh, what are you looking forward to about this upcoming road trip? It's like eight games over a three week stretch. No, I think it'll be a, it'll be a good bonding time for us as a team and you know, the boys being together when you're on the road, you know, you're on the bus the whole time, you're in the hotels and, you know, you're going out meals on your own. So I think it's good, just a good bonding experience. You know, it'll, it'll give us a test to see, you know, how we do on the road, prepare for that. And then it'll be, it'll be exciting to come back home after that being away for that long. So right, let's ask you about food before we let you get out of here. Like, what are you, what are you eating? Like, are, are, what's your go-to? Like, are you a microwave guy? Are you a cook guy? Are you a boiler guy? Like what are, what's your food? So I usually, I cook pretty much everything. Um, I'm big in smoothies. Uh, I usually have those in the morning and then a light breakfast. And then usually pregame is, you know, either meat, um, rice, vegetables, or, you know, a fish and some vegetables as well. Just kind of light. I don't like to eat too much on game days because I feel, I don't know, I feel a little slower if I do, but um, usually just the fruits and the, mm -hmm. the grains and the meat. Those yeah. three kind of tend to 
Give me the most energy. Do you look at when you eat carbs? Do you look at what kind of carb you eat at what time of day? Do you like program it at all or are you just more of a... Not necessarily, but I think just cooking your own food in general is is an advantage right there. You know, you're not getting the processed foods or like the fast food and anything like that. So I think just being able to cook your own food really elevates your physique in terms of how you feel on the ice and, you know, how long you can go for. I think having that good... Good food helps in the long run, for sure. By the way, we joked a little bit um, a couple of weeks ago now about your family's heavily involved. Like your mom, like <laughs> likes stuff on social, and yeah, she does. Yeah, you you have a you have a. It seems like you have a pretty plugged in family network. No, they uh, she's she's always on it. Um, they're actually up here. I was with them in Park City. Um, oh, nice. So they're staying out here this week. They're they're going to come up to Idaho as well. Um, it's been nice because you know in Michigan they weren't able to come as much just. You know, a five and a half hour flight compared to a five hour. Where are they drive. based out of? They're in Nevada now. In Las oh wow! Vegas. Okay, yeah. that's great. Yeah. So they they're able to come up. Um, my sisters were able to come up. Girlfriend. So it was nice to have them all here. And then just being up in, I was actually up in Park City this last Sunday and yesterday. So it was nice to see that and you know just spend some time with them. So yeah, absolutely. Can't 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 be that are you? No, it's no park. can't beat nice that. I love Park too. City. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, cool, Dakota. Good Thank to meet you. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, uh, I always, you know, I appreciate you. You're one of the, you're one of the, uh, you're one of the more interesting dudes on this team. Like Thank you're you. not. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thank so you. good to see you. Thanks for coming in, man. Stay yeah, healthy. Absolutely. Thank you. There you go, Dakota Raby, uh, joining us on uh, Media Day 2022, 2023 Media Day. Um, Dylan Fitz is going to hop in here in just a bit, but um, I mean, the the what's the makeup of this team is. Phenomenal. And I know Ryan talks about that a lot, but the makeup of this team is just phenomenal. It's one after another. You just see well spoken guy after well spoken guy. And you just, it's, um, you can just tell the camaraderie is something special. And that's a big reason as to why you see so many guys come back from last season's club. And you think about a guy that had an interesting experience. He was with Orlando for three years, got traded towards the trade deadline there in late March, uh, came over here and was a big part of the uh, Grizzlies playoff run obviously it's dylan fitz dylan how you doing good thanks for having me yeah okay we have the dog let me tilt the camera down so everybody can see can see the the dog no of course not the dog is not being cooperative <laughs> to get on camera dylan but that's fine camera shy uh yeah apparently what uh so how important is the dog like what's the uh tell me about your tell me about your pup uh yeah i actually got him last year um in orlando i ended up getting him january 6th uh, put the deposit down on him actually the day of our home opener last year in Orlando and then uh, went from there and then uh, obviously got traded here so made the 35 hour drive with him oh, over to wow. here last year yeah he's he's pretty good in the car though so I had no complaints but uh, yeah it's awesome you know you have a good game or a bad game doesn't matter he's happy to see you after the game and, and that means a lot so oh there he is that's great. I mean, it, it is it that's got to give you some sense of of normalcy, right? Like having a having a dog. I mean, that's got to be first of all. Let's talk about the trade. That's got to be difficult. Um, I mean, and then you drive thirty five hours. Like, what was that transition like for you? Uh yeah, it was tough. I mean, obviously, I think anyone you know, uh, three years you're there with uh, the relationships that you make uh, within an organization, uh, the players and staff and people outside of the rink, and then you get traded and basically across the country and you don't really know anyone there you don't know what's in store you don't know what kind of situation you're going to be in on off the ice so it's uh you know a bit of a gamble when you go to the places that you get traded to but I was fortunate to fortunate enough to come here and uh be put in an excellent situation uh with the team and uh loved it right from the get-go how memorable was the last season's playoff run to you going all the way to the western conference finals and you know, scoring some big goals there I mean I remember that that game against Rapid City or where we ended up coming back and winning with two goals in the final 50 seconds you scored two goals there in the third period to to keep the Grizzlies in that game uh, you know just how special was that playoff run yeah I think that's that's going to be a year in a playoff run that uh, stays with me for the rest of my life even past past my career um, I think obviously the only real way to top that is to uh, go the distance this year um, but uh, yeah, it was special, and uh, you know, you go home in the summer, and people ask how you did, and you get to say with pride that you went to the Western Conference Final, and uh, not a lot of guys can say that from year to year. You know, you're you strike me as more of an intense guy. I don't know what I expected. 
Um, but you just strike me as more of an, an intense guy. So like what makes you tick? What kind, what, what makes you work? Like what, it, what are you, what are you passionate about? Um, I think that intensity is probably coming from, uh, um, a place of a uh, guy that, that works hard and has, has uh, gotten to where I've gotten to in his hockey career from hard work. Um, never been, you know, a crazy skilled guy that uh, is going to go out there and stick handle through a bunch of guys and, and put up, you know, 50 goals a year. And so it's been uh, my hard work that's gotten me to this point. And I think that intensity comes from uh, me expecting the same out of my teammates. Um, you know, I know things are going to happen on the ice that are out of our control but the one thing that everyone in our dressing room can control is how hard they work and their work ethic every day and I think myself and along with everyone in that room expects that from everyone each and every day. Well I know when you and our when you were in Orlando for three years that was a pretty tough defensive team it was really tough to score goals uh, against them and I know uh, the, you know, the Grizzlies played uh, against uh, you when you were in Orlando for a couple of games and uh, must have made a pretty good impression on on Ryan Kanasiewicz, but it's really, you know, you think about being a, a good two-way forward. Uh, how much pride do you take in, in really being good offensively, but as well as, you know, defensively on things like the penalty kill and, and uh, you know, making sure you set a tone to where, you know, defense can turn into offense? Yeah, I think for me I, and, and for everyone, offense is fun. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want to be, get those situations to play, you know, special teams and stuff, coaches have to be able to trust you. And um, I think even more so since I've come to pro, I've really – Focus and tried to take my defensive game to the next uh, to the next level. Um, obviously, the higher up you get, the harder it is to play defense. So you're you're constantly learning, and I think I hold myself to a pretty high standard defensively. And uh, when uh, I don't meet those expectations, it's disappointing, and uh, it's back to work. But you guys, as a forward group, seem like you have a good, hard-working defensive group. I mean, there's a lot of guys in that room that that take pride in in working defensively. How much do you guys talk about that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think with our team and, and probably other teams, you know, offense stems from good defense. Uh, the less that we can have the puck in our defensive zone, the, the more time we get to go play with it down there. And I think uh, we've got so many guys that are so offensively gifted and, as you mentioned, defensively uh, stable as well. That, that leads to a lot more offense for us. So, like I said, the faster that we can get out of our zone, the better it is for us. Well, isn't that what wins you games? I mean, I'm a big believer that it's it's all great that everybody wants to score goals and be on whatever. I think your blue line, but I think your defensive forwards, your ability to forecheck, your ability to back check, I think those are the little things that you guys do so much better. I think we saw that Saturday night against Rapid. Like, they kind of came apart a little bit. You guys stuck to your system. You played great defense. I think that's part of the reason that makes you you guys such a tough club to deal with. Yeah, and, you know, I think it's just going to keep getting better for us. I think that was our first weekend. We, we had some some games uh, in preseason that didn't go the way we wanted, and we were able to uh, have a good week of practice leading up to last weekend. I think it was, you know, sort outs in the D zone and, and all attention to little details. And for as good as we are um, offensively, um, our team takes pride in a lot of the little things, like you mentioned, back check, four check, and our D zone. So that's something that... Uh, we plan on to get even better with as we move forward into this road trip. I know we saw so many players returning from last season's club. What kind of went into your decision to decide to come back to Utah? Yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, um, the way that I was treated by the organization. I think obviously the situation that I was put in uh, when I got here, um, you know, playing in Orlando, I uh, was more in a more limited role. And then when I got here, I was, um, relied upon more and you know that makes hockey fun for an individual when you know every time you're jumping over the boards your teammates are looking at you to make a play or have some sort of impact on the game and uh, that makes it fun fun for me and um, you know I had uh, a small taste of success down the uh, stretch and into the playoffs and uh, made me really curious what I might be able to do with a full season here. What's that eight-game road trip going to be like? Uh, you know, playing Idaho for two, and then Kansas City and Allen. Um, uh, what, what's going to be the key to have a successful road trip there to kind of jumpstart uh, this season? I think simplicity. Uh, same, same with what we were kind of preaching with our home games. Um, you know, these teams are going to be excited to play in their rank in front of their fans, and um, if we get away from our game plan, we could be on the wrong side of it pretty quickly. But if we stay simple the way that we want to, and the way that we show we can on Saturday night, then I think. Uh, we're going to be on the uh, right side of a lot of the games coming up. But, uh, yeah, 
yeah, I think it's going to be good for the team. You know, the, the interesting thing about eight game road trips is this is not an easy league to, to play in. I mean, this is, and you, I, nobody has to tell you that, you know, that like, what are the challenges of, of that? Now, obviously you guys are not gone for three straight weeks, but when you talk about going to, a, you know, a Kansas City and Allen, a, a Boise, like what are the challenges of being a good professional hockey league in the ECHL? I think just taking it one game at a, at a time. Um, you know, we're focused on our, our game uh, Friday night in Boise. Um, you know, obviously guys are having to make arrangements, whatever, for the time that we're away for the uh, Kansas City Allen trip. But uh, I think our main focus is Friday night. And then after Friday, we'll deal with Saturday, come home, get a day at home before we head back on the road. And then uh, um, just taking it a day, day by day, period by period, and uh, keeping it simple for us. Is that easier said than done? At times it can be, yeah. I think, uh, you know, you get ahead of yourself and you, you have the games and you can sometimes look forward to some of the days off that you get. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a business and, uh, you know, everyone has to go out there and has a job to do and uh, you got to take care of uh, what you got to do on the ice. <laughs> Dude, you are so polished. <laughs> it's a, you, This is not your first interview. So I will tell you, yesterday we did all this stuff on the ice. You were the one guy who just like skated up to the camera, picked your head up, and you were like, all right, see ya. Like, it was, this is not your first go around, is it? No, no. I think, uh, you know, obviously you get to pro hockey, you do some interviews and, and talk, and um, people want to hear what you have to say. And, and as for the social media side of it, you know, coming from Orlando, they do a great job with it over there. And um, it was uh, something that you pick up pretty quick and uh, just was something that, uh, you grab onto and you bring it here. Well, hey, good to see you, man. We appreciate you stopping by. Stay healthy this weekend. Will do. Thanks for having me. You bet. There's Dylan Fitz. Uh, Jared Youngman's going to hop in here. So uh, there goes the dog. I love the fact that there are so many dogs on this team. Um, and Dylan's got one of the better ones. Thank you. Is he wants you to tilt that microphone down. Jared Youngman oh. is waving his hands. Jared, this is a vocal business. Is, uh, the I'm watching Tyson and he's gonna, I want to see his face, you know what I'm saying? Nobody you know what I'm wants saying? to see that. That's... Nobody, nobody, come on now. So there he is. You got to get the mic down a little bit for you, Tyson. Yeah. Have some fun, so. There he is, Jared Youngman, the vice president of your Utah Grizzlies. Yeah. Uh, interesting day, interesting season. Like, how are, how are things? Things are great. You know, yeah. we're two, two games in, 30, uh, 34 more to go, plus playoffs. Yeah, we got three weeks to prepare for the next home stand, but uh, things are fantastic. So ticket sales is going great. Well, what about some of the uh, changes to the arena from uh, last season to this one? There's a lot of changes coming. Uh, obviously, we were everybody's hoping to to see those changes happen opening night. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't ready for that. With a few little things needed to come in. End of the day, uh, the talk this morning is that come uh, November seventeenth. Um, I'm sure everybody looked up in the rafters and was like, <laughs> what is that? What the right? heck is going on up there? Those four screens will be down. Um, they're also talking about uh, that north end. Yeah. Uh, that screen will be gone, and there's going to be huge digital boards right there as well, new scoreboards. So the experience is going to be changed with uh, a lot of great uh, new digital boards coming in. Well, think about how long we've all been talking about that. I mean, this is not something that's brand new. This is no. something that, I mean, that little mini Tron, I guess, that's now out in the parking <laughs> lot somewhere. But think about that. I mean, yeah. this, this season, you're coming off of arguably one of the most successful seasons in the history of Utah Grizzlies hockey. Right, yeah. The building has been crazy busy over the last six weeks. Absolutely. And I still can't believe that you had a rodeo concert combined event right. in here on top of ice. Like... Yeah. Think about everything that you guys have been through and then think about this process of putting in those those boards, you know, the center hung, right. all those ribbon boards, as they're called. I mean, this is not a small undertaking. What goes yeah. into a project of that size? There, there's a lot, right? I mean, you're just the fact of getting the old stuff down, uh, you're putting new stuff up. Obviously, if you've got weight situation, you might have to do some reinforced, you know, steel on top of that to make that work. Yeah. You know, they were uh, had to do some some reinforced stuff at the top of the uh, catwalk area, so the, the big boards now can be reinforced there. 
it's all timing, right? I mean, like you talk about, you know, even looking at, okay, when are we going to get the ice in? Well, that ice went in and covered for, you know. Immediately. The, it was the, crazy. Immediately for, the, for the, the Dirt Rodeo concert. And then they had a show that, you know, I think they announced that, you know, three, four, five weeks out, which is usually not what happens. And it was a sold out show um, the next day. So, so then, then that little dude, Jack Harlow, was here, you know, yeah, yeah, like how crazy was that yeah. crowd, right? Oh, it's nuts. Well, and like we were even talking today, right? I mean, we've got a little bit of a lull, but, you know, here in the next week, you've got Jake Owen coming in, and then you've got, you know, three more concerts, and you've got hockey, and obviously the, the Salt Lake Stars are now going to be playing out of here. So you've got... Oh, just the Salt Lake Stars, you, yeah, you, you know. you've got basketball now. So, I mean, there's there's going to be a lot of a lot of stuff happening um, to make it work. So, I mean, end of the day for us, it's, you know, it's all it's all hockey for us, right? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's great seeing people come through. What kind of an impact has uh, Ryan Knasiewicz had in the organization in his time as head coach? Uh, Ryan has had a huge impact. Um, you know, I think... Everybody loved Tim, and it was a great opportunity for you know for Tim to to move up uh, last year. Ryan taking over in September last year, end of September, I think it had a lot of people questioning, you know, what's going to happen this year, not having the off season to really go out and you know bring players in, but with you know what Ryan did with the help of Colorado bringing players in, um, you know, and obviously watching you know all the players talk about Ryan being. A players coach right um ryan knew how to take care of those guys how to make them work what to do um and he brought um a huge huge opportunity for the boys that come in here you know we win the, the division we go on to the playoffs um you know and, and even this you know this uh, this summer was a lot it was a huge effect fans wanting to see it i mean utah is is a, is a sports town that wants to see wins um, and with what he's done for us, um, we had a huge successful off season when it comes to season tickets and mini plans, you know, being purchased and seeing an increase there. Um, groups is going to kick up and make things happen as well. So Ryan's, you know, fantastic. Um, you know, I will say uh, we in the works we do have a Ryan Canas which bobblehead that's coming out. Oh wow! Um, it'll it'll be a it'll be a giveaway that's just for ticket package holders. We'll probably have a few extra. We'll sell up in the team store or add to a ticket package. But you know, you want your Ryan Canas which bobblehead. The easy way to get it is to have season tickets or a mini plan for sure. Do you know anything about selling tickets? Like, are you you know can you tell people maybe how can you buy tickets or anything like that? Maybe. I, let me let me try it and see. I, 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 put me on the spot like that. It might might uh, might hurt. But no, I mean the easiest way to do is to, to call call the Grizzlies office nine eight 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 thousand. You know you can speak with myself. Spencer's in the office. Jamie's in the office. Kieran's in the office. Um, you know we're happy to help. You know, end of the day, you've got season tickets and then you've got mini plans. We've you know, you want to create six a six game pack or a twelve game pack. We'll create whatever package you want to create. Yep. Um, to get you come out. Obviously, the biggest thing for most fans is it's that seat. They want their specific seat. Um, but think about how chick ticket sales changed during the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, if you think about, like, you, there are no such thing really as paper tickets anymore. Like, no. you're getting things sent to your phone and your email. And like, what were the challenges at this level, right? In minor league sports, because right. essentially this is double A hockey. You have a level above you that's triple A and then, then the NHL. Yeah. yeah. But at this level, every single ticket matters. Like every butt and every seat matters. So what have been the challenges coming out of the pandemic and changing the way you guys do business? Yeah, I think the biggest challenges is it's change. Change is tough, right? I mean, I remember, you know, 20 years ago when I started working, you know, here or interning here, you know, the season tickets, it was that paper book. It was the colorful. It was, oh, yeah. You know, everybody wanted it. Um, and then, you know, everything going digital. I mean... Three years ago, we went digital with access, um, and the change kind of got to the, the fans. It's hard, um, you know. This off season, we went into Ticketmaster. We still are dealing with some stuff with Ticketmaster, but to me, the easiness of Ticketmaster is there. We just got to deal with it. We got to learn it um, and and take that change and, and move it forward uh, to make it work. I mean, I just to me now, it's just it's just getting it back in business. I mean, I had a you know this even after the season started, we had people coming up to the table buying season tickets. You know, I got a phone call from a former, former season ticket holder saying, hey, 
you know, it's time. You know, I mean, the, the, the COVID hurt because it took people away. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that we're getting back into it, it's, you know, seeing the fans and seeing the, to me, it's a relationship situation. You know, it's like seeing, you know, people on the concourse and, you know, after even you guys moving back, right. And seeing you, it was great yeah. to see you guys and talk to you and see these fans. And, you know, you've got, you know, Gene Butler season take order down in one, one, uh, one thirteen. you know, we score a goal and that man <laughs> runs high five and everybody. He, he is right. Yeah. I mean, he, he's yeah. jumping, he's jumping down seats. He's running across high five and goes up and, and that's something that it's so fun to see um, because it, he gets people involved. In, but in that's that what sports is, man. Sports is it's it's this unique relationship we have with each other. Right. You don't have to know each other. You don't even have to know my name. Right. We're gonna cheer a goal together. We're gonna like. I mean, we're all gonna be excited. That's what this building's yeah. about. That I've, that's what it represents to me. Anyway, hundred percent. I mean, it's and to me, I've always looked at it as. Here's an opportunity to get out of the world, yeah. right? I mean, let's let's leave all the the junk and what's going on, and say, so, you know, something. We can come in here and and we can laugh and scream and yell and, you know, I mean, I've shed a few tears with some losses, and you know, we cry and, you know, just it's it's about just having fun, and enjoying the experience and creating memories of what's going on i mean i can tell you there's times i don't know if we won a game or lost a certain game but you know what i do remember is the memories that come from that game whether it's a theme night whether it's you know an angel hands auction an angel hands auction or military or guns and hoses or you know i mean i i've tried to pride myself in you know before the game starts i'll go out in the arena and you know if i see a young family sitting down i'll go pick them up and say hey come with me and I'm gonna go put them on the bench for warm-ups. Yeah. And they don't know what they're doing. They're just oh, we're just here. And it's like all of a sudden, what's this guy doing taking me? Now I'm going in the back hallway. Now I'm going through a locker room, and all of a sudden I'm on a bench. And it's then cool. the players, I mean, you've you both obviously have seen it, but the players get out there, they're skating, and then they'll come over and they'll high five, and sometimes they're gonna get a puck, you know, and those kids, I mean, you see them smiling. The look on their face. It's awesome, right? Yeah. And the, or, or it's, yeah. the, you know, it's the kids smiling, but then you look at the parents, and the parents, you know, it's just like, wow. Because their kids are happy, the parents are even more happy. About yeah. It. So it's, just, it's all about having fun. Totally. Is there a memory that kind of, I, I think about the, the game two against Rapid City, those two goals, the final 50 seconds, kind of being my favorite memory. You got a favorite on ice memory of, a Grizzlies victory or a Grizzlies moment that stands out? You know, out? I, the most recent one is that, right? I mean, it's the fact that, you know, I was probably not happy with where we were going with that. I mean, obviously, we get into the playoffs. We want to keep going. But but that was huge. And, and not only for me. To me, it's the fans, right? I mean, it was the fact of standing there in the suite, looking at these fans, you know, the, the first goal goes, now we're down, you know, now we tie it up now, and it's like everybody's happy. Okay, we're going to go to overtime, and all of a sudden the second goal, and the fans just erupt. I mean, the fans were so excited, and you see that. The players are excited. You got the fans on the on the glass are banging the, the, you know, the glass about it. This is excitement. And that's, to me, it's like, okay, that's a win. You know, I mean, it's the win to give these people the experience to say, Here's where it's at, right? I mean, a lot of it, a lot of my stuff probably is more off the ice stuff. Yeah. It's the, yeah. you know, it's finding these kids. I mean, we had a kid last year that had 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 some some issues with abuse, um, but we, you know, through a roundabout way, we got him to come to some games and got him on the bench, and to see him change and to hear his mom talk about his change meant more to me than the fact that, you know, we've got something going on the ice. Yeah. You know, or if yep. it's it's families and I'm mean, I'm always trying to find, you know, well who's you know, what's the next group or what's the next people we can go to to bring people in um to experience it. I mean, I wasn't a hockey guy growing up. Now I'm a huge hockey guy. And yeah. to me, you know, I mean Tyson, you've seen it, you've probably seen it too in in our conference room. Right? Everybody's a hockey fan. They just yeah. don't know it yet. You yeah. have to come to a game. You have to see this game live and experience it live and see what's going on. And Does it surprise it, you when when you hear people say like I didn't know there was a hockey team here or you know I we the building was so great this weekend and I cannot tell you how many people said to me, man, I didn't know it about yeah. this. I didn't know how great this was. Like does that surprise you when you still hear that? 
No, it, it doesn't. I, and I think a lot of it, it's just, it's just the fact that there's so much going on, you know, in the state, um, you know, being from Utah, growing up in Utah, you know, it's all about the jazz, which mm -hmm. is, you know, they're the NBA and you've got real, which is the major league soccer team here. And, and, and then for us, it's just, they don't know hockey. And so when they get them to it and they see it, it's a different situation, right? I mean, I had, you know, my girlfriend, her, her, twin girls had their birthday Saturday night and, you know they dropped the puck but then she had her aunt and a, and a niece in the suite and you know those two are just saying the same I, I can't believe how great this game is so much fun and yeah. so exciting and so Saturday fun. was such you know, a good and, game and man a great game, right like and yeah so you see that I mean it's the fights you know it's just like oh my gosh they're fighting down there it's like yeah we can do that in hockey it's okay yeah right? And so it's just it's it brings that whole thing into when they say oh, I just I didn't know it's like well yeah you you didn't know but guess what now you know I expect to see you back and I expect you to you know the the daughter was like I'm gonna have to bring my boyfriend he's gonna love this and it's like well yeah he's gonna love it yeah I mean who's not gonna love hockey and that's one of the things about it you almost have to you got experience it the first time and then once you do right. it's just the it's the five senses really it's the it's the sound of the ice it's the sound of the sticks everything that goes right. with it unfortunately it just doesn't seem to translate on tv nearly as well as it does in the arena i think hockey is kind of unique in that you know you have other sports on tv it looks just as good but on hockey it's it's the it's the in arena experience yeah. that just stands out as opposed to what you see on tv absolutely i mean it's and it's and it's all the experience right i mean it's the you know it's the music it's you know angelina doing our game ops does a fantastic job with that um and, and adding more stuff when you know, the place not being taken care of on the ice and there's other things going on. You know, the corporate sales group has done a fantastic job of bringing sponsorship groups in to, to again, increase the experience of what we're doing. The ticket sales folks are doing their job by putting more butts in the seats and it's a collective effort, right? Yeah. I mean, even looking, I mean, Tyson and, and his call and, you know, obviously adding in YouTube and Tim, you and Jay coming on board. You know, it, it just, we're, we're increasing the, the level of entertainment value that comes in to seeing this game live. We can watch it on TV because we're hockey people, right? Yeah. But, you know, it's you've got to come and experience this game live. And if you talk to, I mean, any of our fans we talk to, it's, you know, it's you've got to be here to see it to, because you don't know. I mean, the fans that missed the two goals last year, I mean, they missed a heck of a game yeah to to what we saw and the experience that we saw or if it's you know garrett metcalf's first game as a local or it was mason manic local coming in last year yeah you know yeah yeah and, yeah. and, and mason playing with us i mean you see these games you you're here you're going to see something you're going to have an experience that will well, stay look with how you. many people what were we talking about the other day how many people that have come through these doors now are in the nhl like whether it's it's staff equipment people players like yeah. i mean you know, you can go all the way back. I, I love to throw out Aaron Dell, the goaltender. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you go all the way back to the and, – and before that, it is it is major league sports in this building. And that's why I say, like, the boards, the changes, this is a very different building. 100%. When those, that center-hung scoreboard goes in, you're going to have a, what everybody will call a jumbotron. Like, I just think this is what hockey deserves in this market. 100%. And I, I – the transformation, this, you, you will never, this building will never be the same. No, it's going to be, I mean, it's just going to be, yeah, it's, it's going man. to increase it even more. It gives, you know, it gives us as the Grizzlies an opportunity to do more, um, especially on the, on our, on our corporate front. It's yeah. going to give them an opportunity to, to do more, more sponsors doing more stuff with us. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's across the board. I mean, when I started here back in 19, was it 1999? 62, 62, 62, almost 62, 99. Um, you know, just quite a while ago. Well, you left and um, came back, though. I, I mean, yeah, you, you I, left I and left. came I, back. I took a two-year hiatus and came back. Um, but even the guys that you know that that I was with prior to when I first came into this business as an intern and and seeing them go, or if it's you know the players. I remember, you know, we, we had uh, Trevor Daly was was a yeah. rookie playing with us. And it was a game night or game day. He got a call to go up to Dallas, you know, and I was lucky enough to be the only one in the office. And, and I'm, he drove to the airport in his brand new Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> and I was lucky enough to very 
carefully drive you it were, back. You were going to wreck that thing. <laughs> yeah. I drove it right back and parked it around nobody around and, you know, put it back in. But, I mean, you got Vic Barley. Yeah. You yeah. know, he, he played here. He went up in the show, played many years in the show. And Who's the best forward on this team right now? Uh, it's Ryan Kanasiewicz. Ryan Kanasiewicz. Look at that guy's career. I mean, and that's kind of the cool thing. Like, Ryan's the all-time leading scorer. Like, a bobbleheads come in. Like, all that. This is just a good spot to be in 100%. right now. It yeah. seems like we're we're moving in the right direction. Uh, ticket sales one more time before we get out of here. Like, let's talk about, uh, obviously, the, the Grizzlies are gone until November 17th. Right. But um, I'm sure we'll see a good number of people up in Boise this weekend. But yeah. uh, November 17th, what uh, what's the best way to get tickets? Just call the office, 988 You can go online to utahgrizzlies.com, ticketmaster.com. We'll have them as well. You know, bring your group, bring your family, bring your friends. Yeah. You know, come, come out and have some fun. I mean, it's going to be a great experience. You know, be the first, be one of the first in the building to see the new boards hot. Yeah. And bright. The new building. I'm just, I, I will yeah. just say, it. by the way, real quick, the Avalanche style jersey. I'm you excited like that, about you? that it's, alternate. It's, I love it's it. Coming. It's coming. Yeah. There's, there's a lot. We've got that, and we, uh, I've got the, the military jersey that we've designed. Yep. Looks really nice. The Guns and Hoses one we've got. You know, we've got a lot of those fun jersey nights from, from past years as well that we're going to bring in. But, yeah, there's you know, all four jerseys this year are brand new. Yeah. The Holmes, the Whites, the Blacks. Yep. Better yeah. than the Jazz jersey. Oh, the mountain one's pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the, the white jersey's starting to draw on me yeah. a little bit. No, it's others. not. No, yeah. it's not. The yellow is good. And we got Pooch on the Pond. Uh, we've seen some dogs here in the studio. Yeah. Pooch yeah. on the Pond, yeah. I think, Pooch is on, on the Friday. Pooch on the coming up, yeah. That's Friday 17th. the 18th. Yeah, yeah that's You want to call the office to get to get that ticket, but yeah, bring... I'm sure we get all these you know, players' dogs will probably be in the building. Oh, yeah. What a great opportunity, right? I mean, even the Pooch on the Pond, you know? Yeah. It's like... If you love your dog that much, bring your dog to a game and have some fun with us. Yeah. It's great. Do it. UtahGrizzlies.com. Jared, thanks so much for stopping thanks by. Thanks for having me. You bet. There you go. Tyson Media Day is in the books. Yeah, my, my first one like this. You know, there's been other media days, uh, but this is certainly a lot of fun. We saw a lot of great players, and we saw a lot of great stories. How about Bryson Martin? You talk about an impressive mm. Young man, Bryson Martin, you know, he's got some stories. This is his eighth team in the league, and you yeah. know, the stories that he can tell and really the journey that he had, you know, being a third-round pick and kind of going through the struggles. Like, it was interesting. We talked about, you know, how, uh, you know, he hadn't really faced too much adversity until all of a sudden, you know, you're in pro hockey and, you know, you're starting to face some adversity. And yeah. you know, how do you handle that? I mean, we saw some – or we really heard some interesting stories. And since we're on you, you know – we're on this stream. We saw some good stories too. Yeah, and it'll live forever, by the way. Uh, so if, if you missed any of the stream today, make sure you go back and watch from the beginning. But uh, a real pleasure for uh, Tyson Whiting and all of the Utah Grizzlies that uh, came by. We'll talk to you. Tyson and I will be in Boise uh, on Friday night doing the uh, doing the game live this weekend. Uh, I'm so wa I'm walking starting right now. I'm going to walk to Boise and I'll get there by Friday. They told me they were chartering a jet for you. They And it was going to be fully catered and... They told me it was like a whole thing. No, no, no. I may be doing this on the side of the road. See if somebody <laughs> would pick me up. Well, uh, hitchhike carefully, and uh, I, will, uh, I will be there with you. We'll see you Friday in Boise. Thanks so much. Uh, hopefully see you in the building, too, November 17th. Come and see it all because it's going to be spectacular. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.